think it's going to be a long, long time. Till Touchdown brings me around again to find I'm not the man they think I am at home. No, 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 no. I'm a rocket man. Rocket man. Burning out his fuse up here alone. The man they think I am at home. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a rocket man. Rocket man. Burning out his fuse up here alone. Mars ain't the kind of place to raise your kids. In fact, is Oh, my God. I was going to play something called Total War by Non, which is like hardcore and old school industrial music that sounds like someone threw a bunch of keys into the washing machine. It's going clank, 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 clank. There's some dude going, do you want Total War? And um, it's it's a nice song, but you know what? Yesterday, I woke up and I had Rocket Man on the brain. I just woke up and I was thinking, it's going to be a long, long time. Little touchdown brings me around again to find I'm not the man they used to think I was at home. Oh, no, no, no. And then um, I was driving someplace and the fucking radio had the uh, like a remix of the Elton John version. And then I was listening to fucking uh, Pete's talk about retard shit in his stream. And then he brought up the William Shatner version. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is synchronicity. This is this is synchronicity. I have to play the William Shatner version of uh, Rocket Man. See, like Chantel, I, I, I am tone deaf. I'm autistic. That doesn't mean I, I'm not going to sing. I'm going to sing more and more until it drives away my core audience. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful 2013. Um, I don't, yes, last year was the year of the Chud. I don't know what this year is going to be called. Um, it is January 6th. Uh, we all commiserate. I think they're going to make a, what's the opposite of Patriot's Day for 9 11? Not, not Patriot's Day. Evil, evil Trump, Trump pumpkin, Trumpkin Day. It's it's an anniversary commiseration of that. Oh, twenty third. Did I say twenty thirteen? <laughs> Listen, guys. I don't know if you know this, but on December nineteenth, I hit the big three zero. That means that I am an old man. Um, people have already noticed this, but I grayed up the whiskers on my slobber mutt on the forum to commiserate the fact that I am now thirty years old. I'm a thirty year old man. Which means I have to, and start acting like one. Uh, I it's fine. To, I'm gonna continue to cyber bully people, but, um, I I was listening to Turkey Tom argue with fucking Nicholas De Oreo and Flamenco, and I'm thinking like this is this is juvenile. This is juvenile. I, I thought I was listening to the hot goss, the spicy internet drama of our of of this week. And I'm thinking like these fucking little kids arguing over dumb shit. And of course, that's only true with Turkey Tom and the Oreo. Flamenco is <laughs> Flamenco's older than me, so um, I'll talk about that. I promise. I I have I, I have that on my item list. But uh, yeah, I was like, damn, that this shit's fucking juvenile. Uh, I, I have I have strong words for people. Now that I'm an old man, I'm a sage. I have some sagely wisdom for people. Uh, and I'll I'll try to talk about that. I was not able to prepare as much as I would like for this stream because I do have my my tabs open. I have my notes, um, but I don't have my notes fleshed out because usually I think of th some things to say. Um, before I, say but I honestly, it's surprising to almost everybody. Sometimes I think before I speak, and <laughs> I had some things I want to say, but I didn't get a chance to write them down because we're being DDoS attacked on the forum right now. Um, they're very they're very cute about it. I'm going to acknowledge this, even though I probably shouldn't. Uh, I can, they decide what pages they want to DDoS attack. So if I open up my Nginx top and I start looking at the uh, incoming traffic right now, uh, well, it's over now. I guess they stopped trying to figure out what to do about it. But they were DDoS attacking the total retard ward thread. And they were attacking like the tranny sideshow thread before. And they, they try to send messages to me based on what they, what pages they try to attack on the site. And it's very cute. It's very nice. You know, uh, these people are spending all their time and money trying to bring down my website. But alas. I am a mega autist and I truly enjoy doing what I do. So I'm going to continue hosting it. 
Um, where, where do I e where do I even begin? Let's. I have a like my itemized list of things that I want to talk about, but um, I'm not sure if I just want to start digging into that right now. Um, I guess I could talk. I, you know what? There's two things I want to talk about before I start just going through my my list. I do want to talk about the DDoS attacks. Um, because this this is the the big sad point. Let's just get it out of the way. Over the the Christmas break, on like December 24th, I got news that. And I can't remember exactly if this was starting before. I don't even think it was. I think I, I did not cover this before we went to Christmas break. Um, Tier 1 ISPs started black holing the Kiwi farms. Um, I have my own IP address range, and I have my own IP address range because it reduces the number of complaints that go to third parties. And ISPs have the option to decide that traffic will not go to those IP addresses. And this has never happened before in human history. Um, like, as far as I know, no U.S. legal site ever has been um, black holed by U.S. ISPs because they don't like the content of a website. That has never happened before. So we are currently, right now, if you are a customer of CenturyLink or Quest or Lumen, uh, Lumen is a tier one network, but CenturyLink and Quest are domestic ISPs that are part of the same company. If you are a customer of those ISPs, the, your ISP, CenturyLink, has decided that you do not get to access the Kiwi Farms. Simple as. They think that you lack the emotional maturity. They lack, you lack the um, intelligence to make the decision that you want to visit the website on your own. Um, I have tried to flip this, and it did work, but it, it seemed to be automated. Now we're back on the black hole list. So if you are a customer of CenturyLink or Quest, and you cannot access KiwiFarms.net without a proxy, you should complain to your ISP. And then if you are affected, you should also look into your state's net neutrality laws because even though the FCC, um, and I'll, I don't want to get too political this stream, but I, I have the piss and vinegar for it. Um, Donald Trump, is, if you don't know, net neutrality is a good thing. And if you believe that it is a bad thing, um, you have been deceived. People have said that because Reddit and Google support net neutrality, it is also automatically a bad thing. Verizon has sued the FCC over 20 years. So this is a funny thing. If you think that net neutrality was made by Obama in 2010, you're mistaken. Verizon has been against net neutrality for over 20 years at this point. Donald Trump gets in and he makes Ajit Pai, a fucking Pajit shit in the street, Ajit Pai, the FCC chairman. And the first thing, only thing of note that he does is that he repeals net neutrality. So um, everyone thinks for whatever reason that this is a thing invented by Google and Microsoft and Netflix to steal bandwidth from ISPs. It is not. Um, it is the reason why CenturyLink is allowed to decide for you what websites you can and cannot access. But states have enacted their own net neutrality. So if you are in a state like California, Oregon, I think even Washington, um, check to see if your, F your state level FCC counterpart as um, a net neutrality law. In that case, complain to them that your ISP, if you're directly a CenturyLink or Quest, don't complain on behalf of others. But if you are a CenturyLink Quest customer affected by this and you cannot access the site and you are in these states that have net neutrality, you should complain to your state uh, government that you are being uh, your, your rights as a citizen of your state are being infected. Um, and if you're outside of those regions, complain to your ISP directly and do both if you're in them. Um, other ISPs are affected. Um, as I mentioned, it's a big company, and it owns a, a company called Lumen or Layer 3. This is a Tier 1 backbone. If your ISP is a small local ISP, they probably use a Tier 1 for transit. If their Tier 1 is only Lumen, those ISPs are also negatively affected. And this is harder to diagnose because you need to do a trace route. But generally speaking, everyone in the world should be able to access the KiwiFarms.net. If you don't know if Lumen is your Tier 1, your ISP's backbone, you can do a trace route. If you need help, um, email me at jcmoon.pm. PM me or PM dot me. I'll try to help you with that. Uh, but yeah, this is, um, we, we have to escalate this. This is retarded. And I, I have tried to reach out to a couple different right wing pundits, um, to discuss the fact that the internet is breaking apart at the seams. I want to challenge some perspectives on net neutrality and, uh, section 230 that are out there. And I want to bring awareness to people that the, the build your own internet thing is a meme. It, it does not work. You, there is no level of self-sufficiency that you can achieve, even with millions of dollars at this point, to keep your website on the internet unless you have serious pull with people who are embedded into the system. And, uh, like, 
even even in companies like Arleon, which is a tier one, or I don't know if it's a tier one, but it's a very big ISP in Scandinavia, and they provide transit to Terrahos, one of our providers. Um, they've dropped us, and they've dropped us because apparently, from what I've heard, one guy and one tranny in their U.S. department has made the decision for them. And all the you know libertarian types in Poland and, and Scandinavia who are against this, they don't get to have a voice. They're discussing it, quote unquote. So um, I really don't know what to say. Uh, you, if when I get more news of this, um, I'll let you know. Uh, make sure you follow the Telegram. I'll keep you informed about what's happening. Uh, it's very sad to see, and it's like you have Rumble coming up, and Rumble, you know, is this big company that people are flocking to, and they want to host websites. I've tried emailing them; they didn't reply. Um, but the, the gloves are basically off, uh, people like people who challenge my site, people who are like in family used to ask me, like, it's such a stupid site. Why do, why bother hosting a stupid site? And it's specifically because it is such a stupid site that I know if this stupid site can't stay up, if a fucking bullshit joke website cannot stay up. What hope does anything that actually has any chance of, of challenging the status quo, what hope does anybody have to stay online? Uh, so I feel very strongly that we should be able to exist on the fair net. And I think that the more people willing to, I, 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 like I know I, I ask people to, to practice sec up or, uh, you know, what's, what's the word? I forgot the word. To internet hygiene, make sure you protect your identity and stuff, but... Um, I think more people willing to get out there and complain, even if it means that people might find you because you are complaining to governments and shit, or ISPs. OPSEC, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my, my zone. I'm kind of lost in thought. Um, people, pe The people on the left are not afraid. Liz Fong Jones is not afraid to go out there every day. Go out there on LinkedIn and harass specific people involved in the industry. Uh, harass people... Uh, who run ISPs, harass people who are r relatives of people who are involved in the industry, and the people who are against censorship are afraid of this, and they just let it happen. And um, there will come a time where you, you kind of have to decide if you're just going to roll over and let people do whatever the fuck they want without consequence. Um, not just in regards to this. I can understand if you don't want to be involved, but in regards to everything. Like that guy, there was a guy in Virginia, this has uh, been, been kind of news lately, but... Uh, I don't know how long ago this was, but a guy in Virginia, in one of the well-off areas of Virginia where all the D.C. politicians send their kids, um, goes, sends his daughter out to school, and a boy with a penis rapes her, and when she tells her dad, he goes to the, the PTA and tries to ask for answers about why this has happened and why nothing was done, and he was arrested and... Uh, has been labeled a right-wing extremist and a potential terrorist because he wanted to ask questions about why his daughter was raped and the boy that did it just gets moved to different schools every time he rapes somebody. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the, the thing that we need is numbers in regards to anything, into pushing back into the bullshit, you have to be willing to, to risk um, being maligned by the public. It was a Nicker, is that why? A Nick Gurr? I didn't know his name was Nick. That's interesting. So, uh, okay, that's enough of that. Um, I can talk now about the, talk about the site. Oh, the patches. The patch sale is ongoing, by the way, everybody. Um, you can now, I have, I have fixed the RSS feed. I have gone back, I've painstakingly uploaded all the, um, all the old episodes to the RSS feed, I have gone through and put them up on the site. I got them on Odyssey. I got the, I, I have done absolutely fucking everything. So if you would like one of the patches, they are currently for sale um, on the Mad at the Internet site. I, I have delayed it much longer than I was intending to um, to finish the sale. And the reason for that is um, I wanted to mention it on the podcast first. So these are for sale. Um, they will not be out by the end of the month at the latest. And uh, make sure, for the love of fucking God, please, when you go to order, do not press the buy, the checkout button twice. Like, it doesn't matter if the capture resets, doesn't matter if it takes 60 seconds. Just give it, give it a minute. It will go through once you press the button. It just takes forever. 
Um, any recommendations for a JavaScript HTML5? I want to be helpful and things too, and I don't want to fuck up. Um, you can literally like I just take a coding course. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that like online coding courses are extremely easy to find now. You have to just make things that you want. Figure like say to yourself, I want to build something. How do I go out and build it? And then figure out how to build it. That's how I learned. Um, I made things that I wanted to, and I just kept doing that forever. I never, I don't know. I, I'm not like the best of anything. I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, but that's how I do it. Why do you keep saying, don't, this guy leaves a comment on every single one of my streams that says, please don't use F word with the Lord's name. I don't do that. You keep spamming that. I swear to God, I, don't, I do not do that. I, I really wish you would timestamp this because I, I, I don't, I just, I, it's really confusing. He's been doing it for years and I'm pretty sure I don't, unless I'm just completely insane. <laughs> I really don't know. Okay. Anyways. Um, so let's, let us proceed back to December, 2022. And I want to recover the things that I featured that I did not get time to talk about. Um, during, uh, the break. So this is liquid Chris. I'm pretty sure there, there's hot, there's hotly debated. Uh, it's hotly debated if um this is actually Liquid Chris or not. I'll leave it up to you. I'm just gonna play like a couple seconds of this. He's in the he made this for Kyrax or Cyrix or whatever the fuck his name is. He's come out of a ten year retirement. If this is the guy, and my intuition tells me that it is, then it's very shocking because this is this is considered the coolest troll from like the Chris era. I don't know what would compel him to do this though. Hmm. Captain's Log, Star Dates, December 5th, 2022. Hmm. My name is uh, Christian Western Chandler. If it's not him, it sounds just like him. It, it is dead on, and it's sort of strange because you're impersonating someone who is doing their own impersonation, and it sounds dead on. I am the uh, true and honest creator of the uh, Sanchu. And Rose of Chew Comics. He showed his face. Is it him? And, uh, Is it not him? I, I know I it's haven't him. made any uh, I don't the think YouTube it's him. videos okay. in, in a long time. But there's an explanation to that. But that... Sorry, I don't want to play it all. I just want to ask... Wait, engage with your audience. Start a Q&A. What the fuck does this button do? What does this do? Oh, jeez. What the fuck is it doing? Holy shit. Question list. See your viewers' questions and click them for everyone to see. What the fuck? Holy shit. Oh, my God. Select question. What does this do if I click this button? Where do baby come from? It comes from the stork, obviously. Wow, this is bizarre. <laughs> it's like they're trying to compete with, like, stream elements, and they've just, like, Baked it into chat as awkwardly as possible. Very strange. How do I end this? Oh, oh, geez. Um, end Q and A. Confirm. Fascinating. Fascinating detour. Okay. So then, also, uh, I want to talk about EDP. Can I? His name is like obscene. I don't know if I can say it on on the stream. I'll just call him EDP. Because I, I don't feel comfortable saying what his name is. Cause I don't know why. It just feels really gross. Because look at this guy. Looking at this guy's face and saying his name makes me kind of queasy. Um, he, EDP. Fan, <laughs> actually. Uh, <laughs> I have to talk about Jim at some point. Because uh, I, I was shouted out kind of pleasantly. So, But I'm going to have to find a video that I made. I, oh, holy shit. Is it even on this channel? EDP445. Takes out the trash. Oh, I'm never gonna be able to find this. He um he made a video a while ago. So, that, so I shot the fucking dog that lives across the way. You know, a, a little barking ass motherfucker. I had to take him out. Pow! And then I lined up all this anime shit, including Jim saying a woo. No, I lined up like three different characters saying a woo, and then Jim at the end with the gunshots. And people got mad at me like, why are you trying to kill Jim? Um, I just like that clip. Unfortunately for me, um, I like the clip by this guy. So that means that he had to come out and try to fuck a kid. From what I understand, he got caught in a sting operation trying to seduce a child. And now he's like, that that was all fake. That that never happened. 
his, his his story is literally that it was just like a setup and that the 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 logs or whatever are completely fake. So he's in a stage five renal cancer or kidney failure. Wait, I said renal. That's renal is Latin for kidney, right? So I'm right. Stage five renal failure. Um, and he says he has about a month to live because his, his kidneys are failing. He's not going to have the dialysis isn't going to help him. So it's so late. So he put out this video and he's so pissed because he's like, he, he gets all this support. So people saying like, I can't believe you're dying. It's so sad. And he's like, where was y'all when I was being called a pedophile and fuck y'all. So he's just, he's, he's literally going to die mad. Let us, let's listen to that right now. Let's skip ahead. You feel me? Fake motherfuckers too well. You feel me? I don't deal with fake ass motherfuckers too well. You know what I mean? Um, I don't want people crying, feeling sorry for me. You know what I mean? Because you guys were so motherfucking worried. If you guys are so fucking worried, um, how come you guys weren't worried about my ass? What was it? A uh, year and a half, two years ago, when a group of people tried to ruin my life, tried. When a group of people set me up, single handedly ruined uh, what it took me, what, 10, maybe 11 years to build. Why weren't you guys worried about me then? Now all of a sudden, because um, you tried to fuck a just, kid, you tried to fuck a kid, you tried to fuck you. That's why. That's why people didn't care about your fucking your stupid YouTube channel. You tried to fuck a kid. Z's that I got comes out. Get your curious chat. Kidney failure. It comes out. Oh my God! EDP are the rumors true? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I got stage five kidney failure. But do me a favor. Shh. You know what I mean? I don't want no fake motherfuckers. You feel me? I don't want that bullshit. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I actually fucking respect the people more who are on the internet talking shit, making jokes, running their fucking mouth. You know what I mean? You know I what I mean? Give it up Chat. To them. At least, at least they ain't fucking switch up. You feel me? You feel them, Chad? All of a sudden, this shit comes out. You know what I mean? Oh you know what my mean, god! Chat? Oh, not EDP! Oh my god! No, what? How could this happen? Shh. Be quiet. Like Judge Judy does. Hey. Be quiet. Keep that fake shit over there. Okay? God forbid. If I end up dying from this shit, shh. Mm -mm. Don't bring it up over here. People who are making jokes, get help. Seriously, get fucking help. Oh, EDP, you're one to talk about getting help. Nah, don't try to twist it. Don't try to construe it. Don't try to turn it. Don't try to, you know, twist it to make it fit your narrative. Nah, don't. I, uh, I just had to let that play for three minutes because it really is just like, this is a man, like, it's sort of, you know, it's internet content. It's funny because he's mad, and anytime anybody's mad on the internet, it's really funny to me. But when, when you consider it from a, a step back, you look at it for what it is, and you realize this is a guy who is literally dying, and he's pissed off that nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> he's pissed off that he, he built something up over his entire life, basically, and he fucked up. He got caught trying to, trying to seduce a child. And now he's just going to die alone and mad because he fucked up his whole life. And he, he, he has nothing. To, he's literally in that stage of, of, of uh, grief where he's just angry at people. Why didn't people do more while I was alive? Uh, that's, that's, that's sort of interesting to me. I, watch, I, I, you know, I don't follow EDPA. I wasn't like a huge fan. I like that one clip, but I was vaguely aware who he was during the, um, the Chris Hansen knockoff sting operation thing. But watching this, I'm just like, there's, there's a level of of you know higher higher thought human grief going on that kind of is it's sort of like you have funny content on the internet right and that's the beef that's the nice beef stuff but when you can understand the the fine human experiences that are going through it that's like the kobe beef wagyu 
A5 marbling in the internet content. I'm watching this, I'm thinking, yeah, this guy's going through some existential shit that I appreciate in my internet content. I can taste the flavors of this internet content. The, the, co the cope beef, the copy beef. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, I like it. That's funny. I can taste the hate. That's right. That's right. That's what we want. Um, I don't know. Press, press S, I guess. Assuming, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I feel kind of bad because it's like he, he did go to jail. Okay. I, here's what I don't know. I don't know if it was a setup or not. Cause I'm going to assume that it wasn't. However, I think that what happened is, is that he went to jail, but he's in California. So they have a nonviolent sex offender and they just think like they just release them because they don't have any resources in California to, you know, contain even their violent offenders. You know, from what I understand in California right now, the police are instructed not to arrest anyone who steals as long as it's less than $800 of shit. So if you get a bag and you go to like California and you just like load up on eight like five hundred dollars of shit at a store and just walk away they won't arrest you so there I, I i didn't follow the legal story to know enough about edp but on the assumption that everything is as presented i don't feel too bad for him to be honest with you next one andrew tate on the uh as we continue to talk about sex offenders i don't know too much about andrew tate um this this came out of nowhere, and everyone is interested in it. From what I understand, he's like an, an incel. He runs like a hustle academy. He, I don't know what kind of name Tate is, but he looks like Turkish or Persian or some shit. And he's one of those guys that thinks like, if I put if I wear enough money, I'll look super cool, and everyone will respect me. And when I see something like this, I think he is the biggest faggot alive. This is like, like. You're 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 gay. This appeals to gay men, like smoking, like smoking cigars and wearing nice clothes and manicuring your fucking facial hair, and trying to be like super ripped. Like this is something that attracts men. It, women don't like this kind of shit. So there's like an undercurrent of like homosexual tension where you're trying to proposition like young retarded, uh, socially retarded men. It's like like I know I'm sexy. You want to fuck me. Don't you want to be like me? You can pay me money to be like me. And, uh, I don't know. I find something about him extremely vulgar and, uh, gross. So that's my first, basically my first impression of him. And then apparently he got arrested in Romania for sex trafficking. From what I understand, he had, um, a couple of girls with him. One was like a Romanian woman and one was a white woman. And he had, uh, apparently confiscated their passports and was pimping them out or some shit. So now he's in jail. And the funny thing that everyone's talking about is that he had an argument with um with Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg he he like asked like Greta Thunberg, I have 33 cars. Please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car complexion and their re respective enormous emissions. So this is like haha, I don't care about the environment. Aren't I cool, Greta Thunberg? And then she replies saying, yes, email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com, which is pretty funny. But it's the, the thing about women and their humor is that whenever they try to go for a gotcha, they always just make like assumptions about a guy's dick. Like that's their go-to. Regardless of what kind of girl it is, what their life experience is, where they're from in the world, it always is like, haha, your dick. And it's that. so it's like, but whatever. As far as like girl clapbacks go, that's that's pretty good. I'll give her credit. And then he's immediately arrested for, um, thank you for confirming via your email address that you have a small penis at Greta Thunberg. So awful, awful clapback from that shit. And then he gets arrested for sex trafficking. So, uh, I guess everyone's saying that this is a total, I think Richard Spencer put out a tweet saying total Aryan victory, the picture of Greta, cause he's like a gross Persian or Turk or whatever the fuck he is. Where, where is he from? I'm curious. The Romanian stole his car as based. <laughs> it's called asshole tax. Motherfucker, deal with it. 33 cars. And he, someone said, oh, he, 33 cars and he couldn't get away from the cops. Um, Andrew Tate ethnicity. Wait, it says, Amer oh, the other thing about him that, that I, like, I feel American English. Fuck off. Where is he from? From, 
He is mixed race. His African American father, Emory Tate, was an international chess master. Really? African American, but he's white as. F Where's he from? People from Chicago. He's like a mutt. He's Israeli. What? No, you're full of shit. There's no way he's Israeli. Half black. He's an American mutt. He was born in D.C. and he had the option of being, because of his parents, he had the options of being um, either uh, American or British. And he decided to be British, which says all I need to know about him. He decided he had the choice of being American or British, and he went with the British. That is the most disgusting fucking thing. That says more about a person than any kind of sex trafficking offense. I don't need to know anything else about the motherfucker to know that they should lock his ass up for life. Take all his fucking cars, burn his pizza boxes, send his money to Greta Thunberg, completely divide up this man's assets, throw away the key. Don't need to hear about the sex trafficking escapades. I, I've already made up my decision. Anyways. So that's that's Andrew Tate. Sorry. There's it's weird. It's like with Jack Murphy and shit, when like a huge thing happens that everyone's obsessed with. For some reason, my mind, I my eyes just glaze over and just goes, Yeah, another fucking douchebag. <laughs> Whatever. So specifically like the Manosphere people, all these guys that these tough guys that try to sell like incels their lifestyle through like academies and stuff it's just them i like i i write these people off automatically in my head as being worth absolutely nothing and it's never steered me uh stray so far um oh oh geez so i did a whole stream about the uh tranche and i i shed a tear for the alpacas because they are probably the cutest fucking animals i've ever seen um, someone actually begged me to, uh, let me pull this up actually, if I can find this real quick. Someone begged me to show a picture of a quokka on my stream, and I may do that right now, if I can. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. There it is. So someone asked, someone asked me, Shlomo Shekelstein XL asked me to show this picture of a quokka. Says it is the cutest animal on earth. Uh, embodied optimism, he said. I disagree. I think alpacas are still cuter. I know these things are really cute and people love them, but uh, I like alpacas a lot. So, which brings me to a uh, sad, sad realization that many of the alpacas in the trench are fucking dead. Bonnie, one of the people I talked about during that stream, has confirmed on Twitter uh, that they helped bury 30 to 50 alpacas in two years at the trench. The biggest chunk was receiving 90% in the 90 plus in the winter of 2020, but they mostly died as the following spring rolled around. If you do not know, interesting factoid about camp, uh, alpacas is that they are not like other animals. They are exotic animals. You have cows, you have chickens. Um, and those are your, your, maybe even ducks. Those are your typical animals that you would see on a farm. Alpacas are exotic. They are camelids. They are related to camels. They are not typically kept on a farm in the United States. So if you want to have someone look at your alpacas because they are sick, you have to find an exotic veterinarian who specializes in camelids. That costs extra money. So when you are a bankrupt Troon Ran organization, you shouldn't go for the harder animals only and as your first animal because chances are there's going to be problems. You're not going to be able to afford their health care. Not going to be able to afford a camelid veterinarian out in the middle of Colorado. Um, and it appears that instead of doing any research or preparing for the task of taking care of the lives of, you know, a bunch of livestock that should in some way enrich your life in return, uh, they decided to just go in balls deep as they do without consent, perhaps by accident, could be a consent accident. And as a result, they have had to, um, Confirm the existence of alpaca mass graves. There were holes dug on the six that uh, people saw pictures of on the like in the background of trans photographs, like on the sixth page of this thread. And someone said, "I work on a farm. Um, that is not a that hole is not like a foundation for some other building. I that is a that is a hole for burying dead animals in." And it seems like they were correct uh, all along that those were in fact mass graves for the alpacas because they did not have the resources or intelligence or wisdom to take care of them uh which has led to people calling the tranche alpacaschwitz 
Um, I have also heard the name Alpacao, like Dachau, I think is how you pronounce the uh, the uh, concentration camp in, in actually in Germany. Most people don't know this. Al Auschwitz was in Poland. All the extermination camps were identified by the Soviet Union on the eastern front. No death camps were identified by American or Allied troops on the western front. All the bodies that you see in those are typhoid victims because they were not able to get medicine to the camps when the Allies were bombing the infrastructure. So we must rely on, on um, the eastern claims that those were death camps. And uh, we must rely on Bonnie's claims that Alpaca Schwitz was a alpaca death camp. Interesting. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> People just wanted me to shit on uh, on the trench. It is it is uh, it is sad that in the hubris of these troons that they decide. Yeah, I can be a farmer. I can just go ahead and I, if fucking cishats can do this, I can do it too. Oh, alpacas are cute. They're so cute. We can make a cute alpaca ranch and we'll use them for merchandise and shit and we'll make the big money. And so, the, so show the cishats that troons can do it too. And then within the first year, they're burying half of their, their cattle in a mass grave because um, they, like with many decisions that they've made, such as cutting off their dick, they did not think what they were doing through. Very sad, very sad. But alas, we live in a society chat. Next up. Um, oh, fuck. Okay. I didn't get to talk about this last year because it happens sort of immediately after. I want to say, where's the featured one at? So this is um, Alejandro Caraballo, which is a troon who allegedly works with Harvard. Harvard as in some capacity. I don't know what the fuck he does, but he's a fat piece of shit. He sits on fucking Twitter all day and he talks about Section 230 and he constantly, constantly makes these legal assertions that are completely and totally false. Off base. I don't know if he's deliberately lying to get likes on Twitter or what the fuck he's doing, but he has no idea what he's talking about at any given time. He constantly says that Section 230. Uh, that if I post on the Kiwi farms, I somehow automatically lose Section 230 protections as if that's how that fucking works. Um, he doesn't seem to know what he's talking about at any given time. And he was sent by um, Harvard to the congressional hearing on the January 6th or like on right wing extremism or some shit. And he gets up there and goes, we have to clothe the Kiwi farm. If that's a bad fight. If that's a bad fight, we have to clothe it. And he's saying how the Kiwi farms are like an imminent threat to fucking human life and shit. And uh, a congresswoman gets uh, completely fucking emasculates this fat retard on uh, national television. And we'll play a little bit of that. Is rhetoric on social media a problem and a threat to our democracy, Mr. Ward? Yes, absolutely. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Ms. Car Caraballo. Yes. And this is after uh, they're talking about how the Kiwi farms is violent. And therefore, is a threat to democracy. Ms. Nomani. Yes. Ms. Tyler. Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> another question I have: uh, Do you believe that rhetoric targeting officials with violence for carrying out their constitutional duties um, is a threat to democracy, Mr. Ward? Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. 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 <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. Only a few weeks after the attempted attack on a Supreme Court justice on June 25th, one of the witnesses, Alejandra Caraballo, tweeted out the following in response to a decision on abortion overturning Roe v. Wade, and I'll quote directly from the tweet, the six justices who overturned Roe should never know peace again. It is our civic duty to accost them every time they're in public. They are pariahs. Since women don't have their rights, these justices should never have a peaceful moment in public again. I know something about... Imagine, imagine if I said that. Imagine if I said that about Keppels, about this dude, about Liz Fong Jones. Fucking imagine what the reaction would be if I made a threat like that in public against one of these people. I would lose everything overnight. But they make these... Uh, just because he's cut off his dick and he works for Harvard, he gets to make these these statements saying that we should put our 
Supreme Court justices, the people who operate the highest branch of our justice system, into a constant state of fear and panic and discomfort. And it, it becomes a meme on Twitter for a little bit. That's the power dynamic that exists. They, they can do whatever the fuck they want. They can say whatever they want. And I guarantee you that the next step is to kill people. They are going to kill people and the justice system is going to do nothing. So I hope that if you are in the United States and I hope that if you are uh, able to, you have already bought weapons, you have already stockpiled ammo. Because, and I hope that you live in a state that has standard ground laws because they will come to kill you when they can. And the government will not protect you because they don't give a fuck. And more than they don't give a fuck, they want you to die. And th someone uh, used the term um, anarcho tyranny to describe this sort of in this imbalance where the government has laws, it enforces laws, but it conveniently does not enforce the laws when the people, the mob, is enacting change that they cannot on their own. Um, so we live in a system that has anarcho tyranny where people like Alexandro Caraballo are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want, say whatever the fuck they want, try to strike fear into whoever they want. Liz Fong Jones is allowed to do whatever they want, harass whoever they want. DDoS attacks are permitted against the site and people are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want to us without repercussion, without any ability to fight within the system to defend ourselves and nothing can happen. So again, I hope that you have some some net in place to actively protect your own life because i guarantee you within the next few years it will just be a thing where people are allowed to kill people who um are, are on the conservative side and the justice system unless they really fuck up unless there's like camera evidence you know and even then they'll try to try to find a way to cut them deals and shit because that's what they want and uh, it's it's pretty fucking nauseating to watch this shit. And I, it's funny, you know, it's funny to watch this fat, dumpy faggot get slapped around by a congresswoman on television. Um, but the less funny aspect is the fact that such things can even be said. Uh, it's it it is against federal law to try and intimidate a member of the justice system. Just in case you know, the judges have special protections against intimidation that nobody else enjoys in the United States, and they still don't do a fucking thing about it. So, yeah, fuck this guy. By the way, <clears throat> it continues. Um, he then tried to tweet this shit out. Um, he tweeted out this stupid-ass fucking tweet about how Romanian authorities needed proof that Andrew Tate was in the country, and they used his social media posts. His ridiculous videos included a pizza from a Romanian pizza chain, Jerry's Pizza, confirmed he was in the country. This is absolutely epic. This is not true. This tweet, which was viewed 66.7 million times, is too good to be true information that was later debunked. So just literally just making, literally, that's all they do. These shrooms go out, they think something is funny, they'll make up bullshit about the law as a Harvard representative. They'll make up bullshit about um, Romanian pizza places, Pizzagate, and then people just accept it as fact because, you know, it's a fun, fat, dumpy tranny. It must be verified, true, check mark. So he gets laughed at on social media. And then what happens after that? He's just been deep dicked by both the uh, uh, the United States Congress and a bunch of people on Twitter. So he comes out and he starts screaming that I'm a pedophile. Joshua Moon, the owner of the Kiwi Farms, admitted that he created a text-only board for pedophiles to post fantasies of raping young children. He also defends allowing the posting of cartoon child porn. Absolutely sickening. Full video here. And then he goes on to say, he, here he is defending the host of File Board on 16chan, which he ran. The board was dedicated to, for pedophiles to meet and post their fantasies. This is beyond reprehensible. So he's super angry at me, and he posts this um, Discord message from some tranny that says he had a whole website where he invited diddlers to discuss assaulting children in their fantasies. And then they spread all the other forums till the whole site was full of CP. He did the same with shit on the HN, that's why he was fired. Literally, completely fucking made up. Um, I briefly ran 16chan after I parted ways with 8chan. I was was removed from moderator on 8chan because um, I wanted Baphomet to dox a tranny that ran the fem board on 8chan, and that's true. There was some fucking tran that ran the, the board for women on 8chan. And then after uh, Jim Watkins wanted me to stop working on Infinity Next in January, I opened 16chan. Someone created the file board, and I made a post saying, if you want to talk about this, it has to be text only. Um, and it, I, I laid out some other rules, but because I saw the board was created and I made a post saying, this is going to be the limitations on this board. 
um, I had the first post, so people just lied and said that I created it. And this other shit is bullshit. Um, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating that, again, that th that's their go-to. And it, it in inhibits me from being able to do the things that I want to. Like, I want to I talk to people about the very serious problems that we have where um, the internet is being pulled apart at, at its seams. And I cannot because people will lie and say that I'm a pedophile, that my website is full of pedophiles. Anyone who hosts us is a pedophile. The family members of people who host us are pedophiles. And it, it destroys their life. And it, it, it happens constantly. And it's because of people like this, because of people like Vordrak. And Vordrak in particular, Vordrak writes these horrific articles calling people like, um, in, in the United Kingdom even, to be pedophile sadists because they have forum accounts. And this is in the, the United Kingdom, which has the strongest, uh, some of the strongest anti-defamation criminal statutes in the Western world. And they permit him to do what he does because this is anarcho-tyranny. They permit Vordrek to do things that nobody else could get away with any, even a little bit because he is going after people that the government already does not like. And they choose to, exec to execute um, government privilege to not prosecute people who are doing what they want to. And that is really fucked up and really bad news um, for people who just want to exercise freedom of speech and host websites and post on websites without being molested by fucking psychopaths who should be put in jail. Josh learned a new term, so he'll be using it for... I mean, it's a, it's a succinct term. Um, and we, we need new terms to describe things because the, the, the mutilation of language is so active and ongoing that it has to be done. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I have to be careful not to complain too loudly because it is... People always say, like, I'm a hypocrite for denouncing, I, I, I mean, I've never encouraged, I've never ever on the forum encouraged people to lie, I've never encouraged people to harass people, and especially when it comes to, like, passerbys, like, don't fuck with people's family, what, what, don't swat, and when they try to shut us down, they have no hold, no hold bar on what they do, they will do all of that, and they'll get away with it, because nobody gives a fuck. So that's just how it is. Anyways, I'm glad I'm glad that these people are having a bad day because Ben Collins, Ben Collins was the one who wrote. He wrote he, this guy. He writes a um an article on the Kiwi Farms, on for NBC, one of the largest publications in the United States, and he says that the um the Kiwi Farms is synonymous with swatting, and. By synonymous with swatting, he means the, the press has put... Sorry, I pressed the, the space key. I'm sitting with my leg up. Um, the, the press has said that the Kiwi Farms is synonymous with swatting, so therefore it is. And uh, he has been fired for not maintaining journalistic standards. This was after... By the way, I mentioned... I think I mentioned on stream that he was the one who was caught donating to Keffels because Keffels read out like a donation. And then he read... Then he, his, like, cop-out was that... There's no way that I donated because I don't know how to use Twitch or some. It's really fucking stupid. Um, but then this was for. Oh, he, he. I think he was fired for doxing Elon's kids or something. Because the uh, Elon hides his uh, planes transponder by wrapping it in, in false information with like a or with a like a code or something to figure out who the passengers on his plane are. And then this guy, uh, Ben Collins, was I think Ben Collins. Um, NBC News temporarily suspended tech reporter Ben Collins from NBC. According to two sources, the network told Collins that his criticism of Musk, which included mocking Musk ignorance about the company's general counsel, was not editorially appropriate. Collins continued to tweet his reporting about, uh, about Twitter last night. Oh, he oh he linked to it. He linked to the guy who uh, the guy who was like on Mastodon on a Mastodon instance, trying to unwrap uh, the passengers on Elon's plane so he could track where his children were at any given time. So 
he got fired from or let go. I'm sure he, he's fine. He's getting paid. He's, his name is Ben Collins. I guarantee you that he is not hurting at all. It's a little bit but hurt. Um, but this, these, these, by the way, were both Drop Kiwi Farms people. And then Taylor Lorenz was suspended from uh, Twitter at the same time, I think for the same thing, for trying to link to the exact precise location, GPS location of his children that were in transit. <laughs> and uh, that's also funny, because if you don't know, Taylor Lorenz went after Libs of TikTok, um, which is an account on Twitter, and all they fucking do, all that Libs of TikTok does is take crazy bullshit from TikTok and repost them on Twitter and says, wow, this is crazy. And because it highlights just how, especially how on TikTok, which is like its own bubble, it has a registration barrier. The content doesn't really share well outside of, of TikTok. So it's like a bubble where only people who are m mostly underage are on tick are being like propagating this LGBTQIP plus shit to each other. And all the TikTok did is break that bubble and bring that crazy bullshit out of TikTok and post it on Twitter. Taylor Renz finds lives at TikTok, finds out who she is, and then goes to the houses of her family to ask for statements about uh, her behavior and how she's like an anti-trans terrorist or some shit on Twitter. Like, just fucking imagine if someone from the forum did that, went to people's houses to ask for like quotes uh, for the Kiwi Farms about why they're they're whoever the fuck fucks dogs or whatever. Every single thing that these people have said about us, they actually do like in, in worse. Uh, that's why I say you got, you have to be ready to just tell these people to fuck off. Cause they, they are the biggest bullies and they crumple the fastest when it comes to any kind of pushback, which is why they're trying to have Elon Musk arrested or some shit right now, because now that they don't control everything, absolutely on Twitter, they're, they're pissed off about it. And it's kind of disgusting. And now, by the way, um, lives at TikTok as a result of this is completely unchanged. She's making lots of money. I think Rumble signed like a huge deal with her where she gets a ton of money. So she's taked off. She's like, stop being anonymous. She went on Tucker. I think she went on Matt Walsh or the Tim cast with uh, Tim Pool. My, maybe Matt Walsh um, talked to him as well. So now it's like, here you have one person who has been elevated by the harassment. And I think the, the people... Hard to say because I don't want to. I don't want to say like a GamerGate 2.0 thing where it's like we all have to like rise up against the the games media or whatever. But um, I'm tempted. I, I would. I I just want to help. I want to help these people push back against these fucking lunatics who have no issues whatsoever ruining people's lives, murdering animals, mutilating children, and uh and killing people. And ruining, like, just absolutely ruining fucking lives and businesses. Like, remember that guy a while back who, he, um, he was caught on camera. This guy was being a dickhead to him, and he ooked at him. He went, ooh, ooh, ooh. And because the other guy was black, oh, my God, this is a racism. This is the most racist thing ever. This is worse than a thousand lynchings. This is worse than slavery. And they found out where he worked. And he worked at a garbage place he worked as a garbage man picking up garbage and he was fired and his garbage truck company apologized and said that that behavior was not indicative of the garbage truck company he worked for and then there was a call for a thorough internal investigation because other people who pick up garbage might also be racist if you offend black people and get on the bad side of these fucking lunatics they do not want you to even be able to pick up trash they want you thoroughly unemployed and like uh like excised from society as a whole and it's like it's fucking insane it is literally insane uh but yeah fuck Taylor Lorenz um oh and this is uh Acer Thorn. if you don't know Acer Thorn's a fat dumpy faggot I don't know anything about him he just looks like a fat faggot uh he's suing a user on the forum and he subpoenaed uh Google for billing addresses and stuff so when you if you uh Decide to go on the internet and exercise your freedom of speech. Be careful. Make sure you're using a VPN and, and disposable email addresses and shit because the court system can be used as a weapon against you by retards on the internet. Just another OPSEC warning if you're not willing to go balls deep. Uh, make sure... Because it, it, it's one of two options. You can either um, go balls deep and exercise freedom of speech or 
and, and deal with the consequences of that. Or you can just shut up. There, there's a very fine line. It's, it's getting finer and finer. And if you, if you want to tread the middle ground and not be involved, but also extra session with speech, you better make sure that you have, um, uh, all your all your bases covered. You better be using a VPN. You better be having a alt ego email address that so you also access the VPN because the system can be used against you so easily. Okay, um, that's just kind of catching up on 2022. Now we are in uh, 2023, and uh, I get to talk about recent drama. And since I don't have notes, I'm gonna kind of go across this. More freestyle, more more easy going. Let me get a sip of water to relax my my throat a little bit. Cobra, oh yeah, Cobra got. I <laughs> I don't have a thing for this, but Cobra got arrested for like drunken behavior on Christmas Day. I'll ask my chat for twenty twenty three. Should I start with? As I let me get another sip of water. I'm very thirsty. Go first, Flamenco or Ricada? Choose, choose wisely. Choose wisely. Oh my God! It's almost fifty-fifty. It's almost fifty-fifty. I can't even believe it. I mean, I'll get to both, but. What is Baldo? Please explain. <laughs> okay, it is boring. Okay. Um, the poll with 800 votes or so is 46% Flamenco, 54% Ricada. I am going to ignore the results of this poll, and I'm going to go with R R Flamenco first. Thank you for voting. Remember, your vote counts. This is a democracy. <laughs> so, Flamenco... Um, <laughs> Flamenco got into a big tart fight with, I think, Nicholas D'Orio and, and, um, uh, Turkey Tom. I should briefly explain my positions on all of these people. Um, Flamenco has never been anything but nice to me. However, I am extremely wary of him. I think that he's a fuck up. Nicholas DeOrio, I know nothing about. I said at one point that he looks like a minor league baseball coach who dresses in a, who like, in his little avatar, it looks like that he's commandeered a throne at like a Buffalo Wild Wings. And now he like is waiting patiently. With, I don't, I just fuck, I hate his, I hate his persona. I hate the way he talks. I hate his stupid fucking name. I hate the fact that he's a fat man named DiOrio. For the longest time, I thought that his name was literally spelled D-E-Oreo, as in the food. And I just thought that that was apropos because he's fat. Um, I don't know. I don't like him. He's like a Keemstar dingleberry. Everything that I've seen of him. He put together one video called Why Everyone Hates Flamingo. And it was just kind of shit. I really don't like him at all. Um, but I don't know anything about him. So I don't know. My opinion could change. Maybe he's a nice guy. I don't really care. Uh, and Turkey Tom, everything that I've seen of him, I like, which is strange. And I know that he shouts out the forum, which I appreciate because so many people don't bother or are afraid to. Um, however, I think that Turkey Tom and Diorio, correct me if I'm wrong, they're both like early 20s, late teens. They're young people. So Flamenco is like 10 years older than both of them, at least, right? Is this correct? Someone, someone tell me. He's literally a child. Okay. They are young. Okay. Okay. This this aligns. He plays Minecraft. I'm like, this is like a kid. He probably plays Fortnite or whatever the fuck. Um, so I've never, sp let me clarify. Somebody said, I, I've seen Turkey Tom in chat like a couple times. I've never spoken to him. I don't think I've ever had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Turkey Tom. Um, I just know that I've seen some videos of his and I, I listened to the fucking Minecraft debate where they're like yelling at each other and shit. And he's like building a house in the background while Flamenco and Nick DiOrio are talking over. Here's what I hate about Flamenco. Um, I, the way he talks, you can hear him smiling constantly. It's a weird thing to, let me try. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. How you doing buddy? How you doing? Like that's, that's, I don't, that's, that is Flamenco to me. He sounds homosexual, and you can hear that he's smiling constantly, 
in that completely inappropriate moment. Then it just it puts like a barrier between me and him. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Okay. Um. Uh, and and his his way of like ha arguing with people the thing is is that he'll never like he'll never be like epically owned you know he'll never go away because you, if you take the shatacon stuff and you apply it to him and you say you watch this shit when you were 20 something years old 24 years old um your anal prolapse shatacon big mommy dom brat fetish shit is weird the problem is that his audience watches vtubers and they like anime so his audience doesn't give a fuck about about any of that shit okay You'll never like epically own him with this because his audience could not possibly give less of a fuck and are probably worse off than he is. So that's the that's the main thing with trying to do these IBS things with Memenko is that um, he's just gonna hey buddy you and then he'll he'll do a three sixty and walk away and nothing will change. Um, and and the thing is, I said I like Turkey Tom, and when I I hear him in these little slap fights, I. It, it, it bothers me. Okay, here's my... Uh, since I'm now an old man, I get to partake in fatherly advice. Um, the, the less present you are in gay IBS arguing contests, the better. Um, even if you win, you lose. Because they are a waste of time. They're, they're juvenile. They're stupid. And the more, the more contact, surface contact that you have with these gay-ass slap fights the bigger the chances that things will fuck up and turn on you in a second. And you're always going to think that you're doing well because your own audience will usually tell you that you're doing, that you win no matter what. Like I guarantee you Flamenco's audience told Flamenco that he won after that arguing and everyone else's audience told them that they won too. So don't even fucking bother. Like I know Medicare has this thing where he, and everyone wants to be Medicare where he would get into the thing and he would make everyone like he had this weird like aura of appreciation that made people like really care about what he had to say and get his approval. Uh, you'll never met a Kurt. Nobody will ever treat you like that. So don't even fucking bother. Um, just stay out of it. It's a bad idea. Uh, you don't want to muddy your hands by arguing with fucking. And again, you're not, you're never going to epically own flamenco. So uh, I don't like, I don't mind the drama where people are yelling at each other and they ruin each other's lives over the dumbest shit. They, as Godwinson likes to say, they snake on each other over the most petty asinine shit possible. Um, the winning move is not to play my friends. Um, however, De Oreo is the perfect person. He should always, he should continue to order Buffalo wild wings and wait for, and, and be involved in gay slap fights. It'll always work out for him. Um, okay. And that's my, that's my thing about flamenco. I don't know. Was there like even a reason why they had this slap fight? Was there like an underlying cause for this? Cause I don't remember. It seems like they just got into a fight. It's literally like, as far as I'm concerned, as my old, muzzled man i'm watching this and i'm thinking like do, do they just like start playing minecraft and start yelling at each other because they don't like the someone stole the other guy's diamonds and now they're calling each other pedophiles and and for watching boy soprano what has happened to trigger this this argument oreo was defending queen kafals she man Oh yeah, Oreo. That's another one. Oreo has to. Oreo. <laughs> Oreo has to stay on YouTube. So he's like, I love the tranny dick. I love tranny dick. I like tranny dick covered in buffalo wild wings sauce. I, I know. Please don't demonetize me, Susan. I want to be the next Keemstar. Please let me stay on YouTube. I love troons. Don't ever dead name guys. Ah, oh, jeez. What a shame. As they say, as they say in in Israel, it's a shanda. Oi, gavalt. Oi, hey, what a shanda. Ah, ba 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 ba. Um, I have no advice for Flamenco. He's thirty four. He's a man. He can make up his own mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't discourage people from spurging. Dude, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I, I'm listen. I'm trying to I'm trying to save my boys here. I got one guy who mildly credits the form in some way, so I have to be nice to him. Like, look, don't embarrass me, don't embarrass me. Continue to advertise my website on YouTube. Thank you. Um, however, now I I want to talk about Rakeda. And I'm debate. I feel like I should just write him an email at this point, <laughs> but. I don't know. Maybe public therapy. Where I don't know. It's it's. It put me in an awkward. It puts me once again, as with Dick Masters, and it puts me puts me in an awkward situation where I like someone and I want what's best for them, but at the same time, 
if I don't say anything about them, then people will assume that I'm giving them preferential treatment. And what I say really doesn't matter. I, I don't know. People say that what I say actually does have an impact, but I'm just one guy. Okay, so listen up. Here's the thing with Ricada. I'm going to try to be as neutral as possible and um, as honest as I possibly can be in my advice. Ricada has an issue with his community. If you don't know, he has currently signed a contract, an I think an exclusivity contract with Rumble. He's now on Rumble. His audience is doing just fine. He still gets thousands and thousands of viewers on Rumble. He has a Locals page, which is a Patreon, and it does very well. He has Super Chats coming in, and they do very well. My man Ricada, who started off analyzing the Dick, um, the Maddox lawsuit for Dick Masterson, is his own thing. Bigger than Dick Masterson, bigger than me. He he's doing very well, and I'm happy for him because he seems like a nice guy. Uh, his wife seems like a nice person, and he has a bunch of kids, and they're all white. So I want what's best for them, and him having money is a good thing. Objectively, as far as I'm concerned, for society, that is a good thing. The issue is is that now that he's in this later phase of his internet career type thing, um, he is making mistakes that I have seen before. And I will try to outline this in a way that anybody, any impartial observer could observe and come to these conclusions. I, I am not basing this off any privileged information that I have of Ricada. We don't talk that much in private. Uh, usually I ask him weird legal questions I think of. I woke up at, at like 1 a.m. one night and I had a legal question that was burning in my head. I'm like, can you lose your citizenship if you um, lie about the COVID test? Because that's like a thing. That's like you have to have a COVID test to get into the U.S. And if you lie on your citizenship when you naturalize, can you lose it if you lie? Is that going to be a thing that we're going to hear about in the news? Can people, will people lose their citizenships because they lied about being COVID shot like in five years from now? So that's, that's the kind of shit I bug him about at odd hours of the night because I can't ask this anywhere else and get a good question. Um, so <clears throat> he replies, I think this is the locals chat format, which I'll explain in detail in a second. So they could Patreon thing. Um, and yes, he did go to the bat for the forum. I, I have many reasons to like Ricardo, but he says in reply to someone, what's Ki Kiwi Farms problem with you? And this is something like his, he has gone and said that the Kiwi Farm says awful things about me, but I still check up on it. And I know that there's some idiots there, but whatever. Um, I find it useful. Uh, and I believe that they had the right to, to bring the speech. That's, that was his position before. But now he says this. They want me to be their trad con dad because I need guidance and direction, but I like tits and being naked and talking about sex and not pretending, pretending to be an incel faggot. This is cope. This is, I do not like what people are saying about me and I'm going to rationalize what they are saying. I do not want to listen to their advice because I don't believe what they're saying is, I, I don't want to do what they suggest. And um, I'm going to rationalize this by saying that they are all incel faggots. Um, they don't like tits. They don't like being naked. They don't like sex. And they're incels. This is hope. Oh, um, and I think I, I can explain better uh, here in a second. There's something on this page. Oh. Oh, did I fuck up? What was this? Oh, this right here. Nick isn't streaming tonight because he drove off, drove the new Mustang off a road. Drex just shared this after joining Apparel with Good Logic's channel. Drex says the road was icy. Nick was only doing 35 and a 60. Nick is all right. The car is fine. He'll be turned away. I had a friend. I used to. I talked about this. Um, there's a clip called Trailer Park Days where I lived with a friend in a trailer, and my friend had like a sixth sense about Mustangs. Anytime he saw a Mustang, if there was a Mustang driving nearby, he would point to that Mustang and say. Look at that faggot driving that shitty Mustang. Mustangs are such, such shit cars. And I heard this over and over again for the entire time that I knew him and we lived together. He ridiculed Mustangs. But you look at the options and you say, Ford Mustang, found dead on the road, Mustang, found on the road dead, Mustang, um, Chevy Camaro, or a Dodge Challenger. Chevy Camaros and Dodge Challengers are what we call Negro cars. I, I had... um. Someone in my family had a, a, a challenger very briefly. He had it for three months. And he he said, Hey Josh, you like this you like my new car? And I said, Yeah, but isn't that like a drug dealer car? 
And we all know drug dealer car is a euphemism for a specific type of person. I dare not say who at the moment, but we all know that it's a, we all know who the drug dealers are and they, what kind of cars they drive and they do, drive Dodge challengers. So uh, those are your options. He does not want to be uh, misidentified by the police as a drug dealer, of course, because drug dealing is a crime. And he instead decides to go with the Mustang, which is the economy class version of a uh, two door coup. And it also is a midlife crisis vehicle. Um, a 40 year old man buys a Mustang. You know what's going on. Everyone knows what's going on. Um, I am now at a position in my life where I can, I have some time away from my kids. I don't have to watch over them all the time. Um, I have money for the first time and I have, but remains in my youth. I'm going to buy a Mustang and I'm going to drive down the icy roads of Minnesota to have fun. Um, look, I don't care about cars. I'm just saying, why are you spamming this? I don't, listen, I don't, is it a Chevy challenge? What the fuck? Charger. Okay, listen, listen. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay, it's been a while since I, I've I've been in the U.S. I only see very specific cars here. Give me a break. Anyway, so y'all, you know what you know what it means when someone drives a car at that age, and that's fine. The main thing, the main thing that he does not get over, um, and I, I'll play this clip here to explain this. What his position? I mean, this is this should not be a secret. And Lady Raggets knows this, guys. My my goal every every day uh i love sex i love i love uh all parts of human sexuality they make me really happy i like engaging in them and uh i would do it all the time and so if i get to do that great if i don't i'm okay but uh i don't know what else my daily goal would be i'm at this weird place where i've kind of like hit all of the other maslow shit and so, uh, you know, that's, that's what's left. Like, what else do I have to fucking do? I've got the, I've got the income. I'm fortunate enough to have the income locked down. I've got kids. I've got food. I've got shelter. I've got clothing. I've got all of the basic needs taken care of. That's, that's it. Get a hobby. Get a hobby that is not, that is not weird sex shit on your podcast i th this is what baffles me you have money you have time and your kids are doing well get a fucking hobby do you have think about what might happen in the event of civil war do you have a renewable source of food do you have a generator do you have these things set up do you have do you have protection do you know how to shoot like get a hobby if you want to get into cars fine that's a good hobby Get your Mustang and then build up your garage and fuck around with your Mustang. Get a hobby. Don't fuck your life up. <laughs> because let me explain. Um, okay, this is a more cope explaining. Um, this part. Let me. I'm just. His right. Okay, his current choice of. The weird incestuous shit with women, wine moms posting their nudes in this local chat is driving a rift between him and his own fan base. It's not the the forum can be indicative of what people may think, but I'll be honest. Like I used to watch a lot of his streams, and I haven't watched them very recently because they're usually quite long and they're quite parasocial. Unless you understand what's happening with like the in jokes and the people who super chat all the time and the the frequent comers. Like, I don't know what, what to get out of it. When I watched, I, I was curious about something. I, want, I, I wanted to be law explained to. Explain to me the thing that's happening. I don't give a fuck about your locals. I don't give a fuck about your Discord drama. I don't give a fuck about the people who super chat you all the time or they're dead cats or they're dead that has cancer and they're GoFundMe's. I don't care. Um, so it, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to, um, to watch stuff when it, it's drifted so far away from what it was that was successful and that's a bad thing and when people on the forum are who are big fans of you are explaining to you why they're no longer interested and your reaction is to demean them as incel faggots that are looking for a father figure um that 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 hurts <laughs> that hurts what you've built up and i think that this clip is about that is him rebuking the the criticism Just, guys i'm 41 no, wait. I'm 41. I've spent 20 years of my life 
No, this is him justifying why why he is going to incorporate sex into his law explaining thing. Having as much fun as possible because I was worried about other the way other people thought about things, the way other people interpreted things, the way other people judged things. And interestingly enough, it was people that were like close to us. And I don't give a fuck about them anyway, because fuck off in general. Like if if you know me, you know. Like, I don't give a shit anyway, but uh, <laughs> certainly, like, don't give a fuck about what people on the internet think. Like, that's that's a whole separate story. But, but that's different. It's okay to not care what people on the internet said. He didn't care what people on the internet said about him a while ago, but now he has to address it all the time. And I'll explain why that's a very shitty position to take. So that's that's coming. That's coming to me. Because I don't give a shit and the second lady rackets is there with me i don't give a shit at all which by the way i kind of make a personal thing where it sounds like he's trying to convince her to adopt these things that she is not inclined towards at the moment um that comes across poorly to me just saying i'll have fun i'll have a blast i i don't (laughs) guys when you work your whole life for someone else and you have to abide by rules and then suddenly you don't have them, my God, you get to be you. You get to be you. And all I want to do in life is just be me. And me is simple. Me is simple. I'm a horny, happy motherfucker. Those two things. Honestly, and... By horny, I don't mean I want to fuck everybody who walks by who's hot. Like, I will appreciate, I'll appreciate attractive people, of course. I'll appreciate sexy women uh, 100% of the time, unapologetically. Sexy women are great. I want all women to look, uh, to look fucking fantastic. And then, and then Lady Raggets and I will go home together. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. And I don't I don't really give a shit what other people think or or do about it. And as soon as uh as soon as everybody's on the same page as me, fuck it. There's a part I don't think it was a part of this clip where he says that there's a bunch of people who are unhappy with the inclusion of sexual content in the stream, and then a bunch of people who are very thrilled with it. And it's like you're you're trying to you're Scream is a product. You're trying to get it to as many people as possible. And when half of them don't like something, it doesn't matter if the other half do. You're needlessly gimping your own content. Um, and that hurts your long-term prospects. You're happy that you're in a good place right now. But if you intentionally try to agitate the fuck out of people who are providing that, you're disadvantaging yourself. He says that... Um, he doesn't care what people on the internet say about him. The issue with that is when you have the internet as your job, those are the people who watch your streams, who encourage Rumble to sign contracts with you, to encourage who sign up on your locals, who send in super chats. I mean, you don't care what they think. It's um, detrimental to your bottom line. Even if you have a, like a good amount of cash sitting in a bank right now, you're going to hurt your, your prospects long term. And I don't know why that has to be explained. I think that the issue is, is that he drinks too much. Um, I hate to say that, but I think that it would benefit him to not drink as much. I think that he needs a hobby. I think that he's bored, and he is um, not handling the middle age thing well, especially because now that he is doing well financially, he wants to explore things that he didn't have the opportunity to in his 20 years of monogamy, right? Um, And I think that he misunderstands what cool and aloof is. It's like if you're... You can do whatever you want. You can um, have whatever hobbies you want. You can have your weird sex escapades if you want. You can play with your baldo if you want. Um, you can let Drexel... Uh, <laughs> you can go to Jamaica, right? And have all sorts of weird fun that you want. The problem is is that when you let that come into your content and disrupt what it is, uh, it negatively impacts you, um, which I don't want to see, obviously, because I like him. Um, and 
the other thing is that very specifically with what he's doing is that he wants to fuck his fans. He is using his locals as a way for people to share nudes. And this will be a disaster for him. It is going to absolutely fuck up his whole life if he lets his his social media things become venues for him to fuck his fans. Um, I will show an example of this. He has a clip channel <clears throat> called Elisa. And Elisa or Elisa or Elisa. And again, they all post their fucking nudes on locals or whatever. She goes into their Discord and she's like an active clipper that brings his rumble content to YouTube for for him. He's she's now in their um Discord saying, uh Hey, I'm being revenge porn in your Discord. Legitimately fix it now. And then Little Wing says, Heffin Lim off your Michael's parents, you dumb fucking leech. He says, I trust you boys will clean it up. I don't know who the other mods are. Thanks. He says, fuck you, Eliza, you fucking disgusting person. You're a hum hum horrible human. Eat shit. And she's complaining that in his Discord, I think this is in his Discord, that she put out booby videos or whatever on locals, or people found that independently because she was involved with Rakeda. And now they're like posting it in Discord and ridiculing her. And I don't know if you remember this guy called... Um, Vic Mignogna, he was kind of this, he was it, he's kind of obscure. He did like um, English voice acting for for uh, for anime dubs and stuff, and he got accused of sexual harassment, and it kind of ruined his whole fucking life and uh, derailed his career for years and years. It was a big deal, and uh, the lesson to learn from that is don't fuck your fans. The easiest thing in the world, don't fuck your fans. Don't make your fans like a sexual component of your online career. Don't do that. That's going to be um, a disaster when I'm reading this and I'm seeing, Oh my God, the, this guy that knows that is like knows talks to Rick and or Nick in some way. And is like involved in this weird sex shit on locals and, and is now being revenge porn by people who are, I think mods of his uh, discord. Uh, I'm thinking like ding, 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 red alert, red alert, last chance to exit before cataclysmic fuck up, before retard drama that ruins your whole life, ding, 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 warning, warning, red alert, big fucking deal, get out, abort, abort, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm hearing this in my head. No, 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 no. It's, it's not it's not a good thing <laughs> it's kind of alarming um like literally just don't do this don't don't do this um do explain the law and and i you know the last time that i latched this stuff he was explaining this um court stuff that was going on and he had all these people, and he had like politicians, like a female politician who was running for office, and his chat was asking her about like Futanari and stuff, and it was like and sexually harassing her and, and asking for feet pics and stuff. And she kind of laughed it off, but it was really awkward to me. And it's like you can there's a lot more you can do. You're satisfied with where you're at, but you can do you can still do better. You can still expand your audience. Why would you why would you deliberately want to make things worse? Because you want to like, you know, if you, if you go out, it's like you go out and you, you do weird sex stuff and you get caught doing it and you have to brush it off. That's one thing. It's another when you are actively integrating the shit into your, your locals and your, your discord is causing these problems and shit. And it's all completely avoidable. It's all completely avoidable. Literally all you got to do pull up, pull up. Terrain, pull up. Why? Just pull up. Just pull up. Just pull up. It's all you gotta do. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. Um. So I. I don't know. Again, I like him. I, I. We're not like best friends or anything. I talk to him sometimes. Uh. And I guess I could have just wrote, wrote him a fucking email and be like. But I don't know. I had like a little chat around Christmas because he was having like he was. He wanted to tell me the same thing that Dick Masterson told me before we stopped talking. He wanted to say, like, man, people on your site sure are fucking dumb. 
And I, I was like, yeah, you know, people can be dumb and they can speculate, speculate, you know, and have rumors and shit run wild and stuff. But, you know, people expect better and yada yada. So I don't know if I gave them like the wrong information or if I just wasn't persuasive enough. Um, but nobody, nobody ever listens to me. I'm just a retard chat. I'm just a, I'm just an old man, an old slobber mutt. <laughs> Nothing much to say. Very, very perplexing situation. I mean, he can, like, if he wants to read his thread, that's fine. Because I think that the feedback that they're giving him, because I, I went through it, and I'm I'm looking at people posting all sorts of stuff from his locals and from his Discord and stuff that's like, these are warning signs. These are the flashing red lights. These are, This is the stick shake in the Boeing 737 letting you know, oh, you're stalling midair. Um, you got to pull up. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what to say. My, like, again, uh, just to reiterate, my advice was uh, stop drinking, especially on air as much. Um, make your private life private again. Get a fucking hobby. Go plant a garden. You know, that's a fun thing you can do with your kids, too. I know that the, the whole thing is like I want to get away from the kids for some time, but you can plant. You can do stuff that isn't, you know, fraternizing with horrors in locals and i get, i think it's impressive you know i realize that he's older than me and he has more life experience than i do but the thing that it's like when you're a man you go through your entire life and you are never flattered right you go through life and you're you easily can just hide in plain sight if you really choose to um and then suddenly you're an, an internet person and even uh, you know, a person like me, I get crazy ladies sending me emails and stuff, and I have to tell them, sorry, I, d I don't talk to women that I meet through my podcast. I just don't. I don't do that at all. I don't fraternize online because that would be a bad idea. But it, it can be tempting sometimes because you know you don't ever get that attention. I think even though Riketa is older than me, he still is like coming to popularity around the same time. You know what I mean? So it's like a novel thing. Like I, I was a married in bumfuck nowhere, Minnesota, my entire life, and now that I'm forty something and I have money, all these wine wine moms are sending me titty pictures and stuff, and it's like empowering and it's like exciting. Um, but they are there has to be some biblical reference for this, right? Tempters. <laughs> it's, it's like they they if they're doing that, they enjoy. There's a real thing. I don't know. It's hard to say for any particular person in locals is like this kind of person, but there are women out there who, in like the the female dynamic of mind, there are women who want to find an unmarried, uh, you know, single man, and then there are women who are like mongooses, and they don't want to find, they don't want to make a nest. They want to find a nest that's already built, and then eat all the eggs in the in the nest. And then steal the man bird that helped build that nest and lay their own eggs in there. You know what I mean? I don't know what what, what you could, like a cow bird. I don't know. They they don't. What I'm trying to say is that they don't look for healthy to build healthy relationships. They look for healthy relationships they can destroy and replace the the woman in them. That is a real thing. There are women who like that. It definitely has some sort of evolutionary success rate where there's a fork in psychology where some women want to build things and some women want to replace women in existing healthy relationships. I think that exists. Um, the cuckoo, yeah, sure, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I whenever I see women doing this and they're like trying to get Nick's attention, I'm like, yeah, that's like a that's like a psycho lady. That's like a parasite. That's like a brood parasite that's trying to destroy things. And it's like you shouldn't pressure your, your wife into being a part of that because that's gonna destroy things. Um, and as, as he says, I'm 40, I, I have all my money, I have everything in order, I'm perfectly happy in my life, and I just want to do new things. Don't, for the love of fucking God, do not use that as an excuse to destroy those things you're already happy with. For the love of God, don't, like, if you have, like, you have a winning formula, and you're like, um, what do I do with this winning formula? I have this winning, for I'm so successful in my life, I'm so happy and content with my position, should I fuck it all up? That would be exciting. I built this house of cards. Maybe I can just pull out cards from the bottom and see what happens. It might look cool. Like, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so why? Very, very sad. Um, anyways. I think I have some, some brief, 
some brief uh Chantal news. Um, so just uh, I'll cover this as, as it's hard to top what I was just talking about with Chantal, but just in brief, just in brief, I won't listen to too much. Uh, Chantal decided to start wearing a niqab very briefly. Uh, she completely covered up and said that she, her mouth is the most beautiful thing about her. So why would she, why would she let other men see her mouth and nose? Now, um, she stopped doing this very quickly. And I think the reason why she, <laughs> looks great. <laughs> I think the reason why is literally that she can't eat while wearing it. You have to like lift up the napkin to like stuff the food in. And she just found that so cumbersome. She eventually switched from the, she found out what it was, um, is that in Kuwait, it's optional to wear the niqab. So she decided against it. Um, she didn't really want to, but she's like, she's explaining to people why the niqab is actually so like beautiful and peaceful and shit and how it's a good thing actually. And it protects women's modesty. And then she's immediately like, yeah, fuck that. Um, this is her trying to play reindeer games with uh, Salah, the Kuwaiti guy that she's hooked up with. She's going apparently on an all-terrain vehicle. She is going one mile per hour. I don't know if it's possible for it to go faster or, or if the thing is just like, fuck this. We're not doing this. Um. <laughs> no, you got to go fast. Desert ninja. It's right. She is a ninja. Uh, back home, things are not so well. Uh, she explains... I don't know if, if there's, I don't have timestamps for this. I wonder if I can just, uh, I'll play it from the start and see what she says anything worthwhile. And then the revenge prawn, um, I have that screenshotted. It's all over. You're like, you're not going to escape it. That's highly illegal. Like, okay, some of the pictures were from my OnlyFans, but the <laughs> that one specifically was a screenshot from a private time. And that's not okay at all. Natter posted uh, on YouTube uh, a, a thumbnail, I want to say, in one of her videos, one of his videos, of her giving him a blowjob. And now she says that she's going to go to the Ottawa police when she gets home to press revenge pornography charges against him. And she sa- insists that this is going to uh, get him in jail forever or whatever the fuck. He also went to the zoos, and the animals were not in good condition. It is a fucking desert, so everything was kind of sad there. She, in particular, she went to a pet store where it was kind of cramped and shitty. So she decided, aha, I'm going to buy two hamsters, which breaks my heart, of course, as a, as a hamster appreciator myself. Um, she bought a small ass cage for them and put a male and a female together. And everyone who knows anything, even people who don't know shit, probably think that's a bad idea. Because um, you don't know, hamsters are solitary animals and they don't want to live together. They don't live in a happy little house together and they need space because they're desert rats. So she's like angry at people like, what do you mean the solitary? How do they mate? Don't they mate? And it's like, yeah, but they have breeding season. They come to, they find each other during breeding season and then they go away. They live alone. She doesn't seem to, she literally doesn't seem to understand what a solitary animal is and what solitary means. So she ends up getting rid of the female. I don't know how she did that. And then she bought the male a bigger cage. And uh, so that's nice at least. She made a lot of rage streams about her ex-boyfriend, despite the fact that she's supposedly married. She decided to piss off um, uh, Salah's friend of like 20 years in Kuwait, who goes on live stream and says that they're not actually married because you can't get married in Kuwait. She ate it. <laughs> you can't get married in Kuwait on a tourist visa. So he said that their, their claims of being married are total bullshit. And that's why they're having issues figuring out what to do because now that they're not married, he can't come to Canada. And she has three bankruptcies. The second one is getting discharged at the end of the month, but she'll still have that one bankruptcy and she cannot financially sponsor an immigrant to Canada if you have a bankruptcy unless she moves to Quebec. So, but because she has a bankruptcy on file, she won't be able to find an apartment easily in Quebec. So it's kind of up in the air what's going to happen. They want to get rid of Pete's. They want to kick Pete's out and make him homeless. So he has to suck dick for cock on the street to afford his rent. And uh, it remains to be seen if they'll try and use Pete's to get a lease signed in Quebec this time so that he can move in uh, with her and get financially sponsored. Because, oh, I should clarify, the reason why they want to move to Quebec is that Quebec is the only province of Canada where you do not have to have a financial, um, where you can sponsor an immigrant with a bankruptcy on file. So if they move to Quebec, they don't have to worry about the bankruptcies except for getting the house to actually move to Quebec, which is why they'll probably need Pete's to actually get into Quebec at all. So that's the weird 
um, thing going on with her immigration status. Um, she, Ella also said that Chantel's been giving him money, like $10,000 for perfume and stuff. And um, when they went camping, she just sat around and ate the entire time. Oh, and then Chantel had this hard rage at Allah where, where he literally said, by the way, because uh, I think Allah has a big house and he rents out the room to like African migrants. So she said that he was a cuckold and the black guys in their house ran trains on his fat ass wife all the time. She literally went straight for the BBC posting and called him a cuck. Like she was an alt-right podcaster or something. Uh, very, I'm not even making that up. That sounds like bullshit. I swear to God that happened. <laughs> and if I hadn't been getting DDoS in the last hour, I would have had a clip for you. Actually, you know what? I might have this. I want. I hope. I hope to God that this is the part where uh, she bed. Uh, Sala and Chantal are broke. They what is this? Oh, 150. I don't give a fuck about this lady's intro. Sorry, lady. I don't care to hear you talk. Follow me. Okay, number one. Do not listen to this guy. He is the biggest loser in the Middle East, all right? We're eating dinner, and we get alerted to the fact that a loser reaction channel sit there, five-hour live stream, asking Allah what I smell like. Are you kidding? I smell better than your wife. She smells like a dirty dog, all right? Oh, oh I forgot. In her epic alt-right uh, neo-Nazi tirade against this poor Arab man and his wife, she specifically refers to them as her, to her as a pig and a dog. And obviously you don't need a multicultural correspondent such as myself to explain to you that in the Middle East, especially in Islamic countries, both dogs and pigs are very taboo animals that they don't want to be associated with. So she learned, she became, she, in her racist mind, she goes out and she finds out just enough about this other culture to insult them more proficiently, which is just shocking to a lover of um, of foreign countries and cultures such as myself. Snores like a pig. You, Allah, Shahmuta Hanzir, you're not going to get away with it, buddy. This guy is trying to get subscribers by lying because we ignored him. You want to know why we ignored him? Because he's a piece of crap, and I'll tell you why. You are fat, Hanzir, Shahmuta, disgusting. Did you see him? He has a bigger fupa than me. Bigger boobs than me, okay? Learning Solid. learning Arabic just to insult people in their own language. This is this is the kind of racist uh, behavior you only see from level one, from uh, 300 grandmaster racist plays. It's unbelievable to me. And we're friends for like ever. This is a Shannon. This is a Middle Eastern Shannon, okay? Salah's been ignoring him. Doesn't want to be his friend anymore. And he's jealous of our YouTube success because if you check out his crappy YouTube channel, he gets six views per video. So he's trying to make money. What's what's the matter, Ella? You're mad that your wife has to work. He provides for me. You can't provide for your wife, so she has to work at a friggin' retail store. But this is he's jealous, so he's doing this. He's jealous and he's mad. You know why? Because when we were camping, he tried to get my phone number behind Salah's back. He asked me for WhatsApp. He asked me for my number. Remember, they don't even sleep in the same bed. Him and his wife. We went over to visit once. She was snoring like a friggin' cow in another room, and I'm like. So we're camping. He asked me if I have WhatsApp. He asked me for my number. Um, solid for so, uh, theory about that. That is the initial incident that sparked um, her telling Salah to stop being friends with his your friend of like 20 years, Allah, um, is that she said that he asked for her number, implying that she he was trying to hook up with her. And she said, that, don't be friends with him. It is speculated by the council of femoids who run, who are participating in her thread that this is a lie and that he she is simply abusing him and trying to socially isolate him from his friends in syria so that she has a more a controlling presence over him that is the speculation uh, i'll leave it up to you to decide for yourself freaked out and didn't want to talk to him anymore and then he didn't really what sealed the deal was that now he got jealous that our vlog from camping was getting a lot of views and we didn't want to talk to him any anymore he was he's trying to be a youtuber he's trying to get me he's like always saying like hey abusers like trying to just suck off of our internet we don't, we're not even famous okay internet famous so oh i hate people like anyway he threatened to make problems for us and like um say make up a lie that we're not married and everything like do it like we have proof are you kidding me like oh my god you're a low life Salah, please type this in Arabic so he can read it. Low life piece of leechy crap. You have no integrity as a man. You're a, not a real man at all. And he says that I broke his couch. Are you kidding? That's bullshit. <laughs> like, or he reinforced his couch. I've been there twice, okay? Like, I guess he, like, sells things out of a studio. You know, uh, 
I saw I got into trouble too because she made a rant stream directed at Natter, the Egyptian guy that's like a like a crack hoe or whatever the fuck back home. And uh, he spoke to him in, in Arabic to try and be more personal. And someone translated it. And he says he called Natter a tranny. <laughs> and she had to apologize for him. Be like, no, you don't understand. I don't hate gay people. Like, I know that they hate him here in Kuwait. He doesn't hate gay people either. He does. That's just like one of their insults. So she had to backtrack him calling Natter a tranny. Case, that's the only thing he's useful for, selling discount items from his crappy store that your wife has to work at forever. Don't be jealous. So he got all mad when we went camping and we did a successful vlog and his van was in the background. That's why we had to edit it. He threatened to go to the cops about that because he was mad because Salah gave him shit for asking for my phone number. That's a big fucking no-no. Like, are you kidding? Salah was like, you know, we shouldn't give him online attention because this is what he wants. He is willing to just do away with any integrity or any friendship, like a long friendship for what? Because you want internet clout so your wife doesn't have to work anymore? I don't get it. Like this is just, anyways, T on his wife, by the way, she gossips all the time, the whole time. And she even talks shit about her husband. Oh, women she do that. She told me that her husband. Oh, women out... gossip. I gossip. I'm not even a woman. Everyone got, you know what? I'll change that. Everyone gossips. Everyone likes talking shit about people. You can pull this Eleanor Roosevelt. Great mind. Talk about ideas. Medium minds talk about news and small minds talk about people. Nah, bitch. Everyone talk about everyone. That's just how it be. Sorry to break it to you. Doesn't even, they fight all the time over money because he won't even like give his kids money. He's such a tightwad. Like he won't even send his kids money who live in the Philippines. Like that's just disgusting. He's just a freak. Anyway, also when they were married to save money because he's such a tightwad, he had like what, four black guys living in the house and like, basically doing stuff with his wife is the intent what we're in, what we're insinuating oh, here she said censored it he's like, old. like she, what four black guys living in the house and like he's like, old. she censors cuckold the clip channel does but she literally says uh fuck it basically doing stuff with his wife is the intent what we're in what we're insinuating here and he had four black guys living with his wife in the same room they have a small apartment there was like just a partition disgusting disgusting dogs um, T-Rex? No, you don't know his wife. His wife is just as complicit, okay? And this guy was disrespecting Salah's wife. So you know what? Yeah, that's the treatment you get. So he's trying to cause drama. He's being successful right now. After this, you're not going to get any attention, Hanzir. None. 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 Oh, no, no, no. I can't be arrested for slandering Allah. You know why? You know why? Because he slandered us first, and he's a public figure. <laughs> nice try. You don't think I'm smart? I'm a lot smarter than all of you. Don't Here is your racism fact of the day. <laughs> So in Arabic culture, slavery is still a thing. I think that they have more slaves in the Middle East than they have anywhere else in the world. And your word for the day is... Abdun. Abdun. Uh, I think that's right. Abdun. Abdun. Maybe that's not the exact one. Hold up. It's a, it's a... Here, wait. No, this is it. This is it. No, that is right. Abdun. That is... The Afri the Arabic word for slave, which is what they call black people, that is a huge offense. If you are black and you take a trip to the Middle East, because you know you're an African American, you're financially independent, successful, you have a family of four that you look after as a proud father, you decide I'm gonna go take a trip to Kuwait because I want to show my children the world, and you are suddenly called an Abd. That is uh, a massive offense. That's basically their N-word. And if you say that to someone in, who, who is African and living in the Middle East, they'll probably kill you to defend their honor. Racism word of the day, everybody. Don't worry about it. Hmm. So it's fair game. He started it. He's a public figure. He's a YouTuber. Let the cops come because they'll be arresting him next. Don't worry about it. Steph needs no, he doesn't know where we live. That's what's driving him nuts, too. Um... We moved and didn't tell anybody where we live, and he's like freaking out. And and he's been trying to reach um, Salah, but Salah's been ignoring him. And I was like, you're never, 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 never ever gonna talk to him again, right, babe? Because he's a piece of crap. It doesn't matter, right, babe? Okay, I'll cut off there. Um, that's that's why people think that she's manipulating him. And he posted a stream. I watched it. It's not interesting enough to play, but he's just like, um, I like Salah. I think that he's making a mistake. Um, and, and he, he made jo like uh, references like he's a man he wants to like you know he wants to do his thing he wants to have sex and stuff but I think that he will come to his senses and he will uh, abandon and tell and that's why it, it, she takes offense to that obviously and uh, he, he's definitely like an older like fatherly figure to Salah so uh, you, gotta, you gotta cut that shit out as, <laughs> as quickly as possible you don't want him to wake up and realize that he's fucking his whole life up
for no reason. Um. Also, she uh, never showed voicemail where she said that she was going to suck Pete's dick, which is fucking vile. And then this person asked, Pete, so this is important. We heard Chantel's voicemail about sexually assaulting you without consent. We saw her drunk forcing herself on you. I know that she's your friend, but that's abuse. And if you're accepting because she pays rent, a lot of trans women suffer this kind of abuse quietly. Please go to the police. Seek help. You deserve better. X. And he says... It was technically sexual assault, but at no point has she ever made me feel in danger. It's so it was easy trespass for me to forgive. Very interesting. And that's the Chantal drama. Um, let me see. I'll, I'll end it there. Is is there anything which I should cover, which I haven't forgotten to cover this this stream? I think I've talked about flamenco, talked about Riqueda, talked about all the stuff I missed in December. I talked about uh, the tax on the site. Salvo pancakes. Um, he just he he was he just fucked up his whole life by trying to fuck his fans, right? He was having weird dis. Oh, like sorry, I, I didn't look this up. Um, I didn't even feature this on the forum because I didn't know anything about it. But like he he was trying to like doing Discord kitten shit, right? He's like a YouTuber and he's like, "Hello, Discord kitten, ha ha. Please, you're so mature for your age, ha ha. Put your head on the toilet for me, ha ha." Right? Is that is that an accurate sum summary of what he did? I actually don't even know. Oh, Jim, I have to talk about Jim. That's right. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, Salvo pancake. I have I have no mental image for Salvo pancakes. There's something. About, there's something about him. Where do I know him from? I've talked about him before, haven't I? He looks like H3H3. <laughs> I swear to God, I talked about him before. He went after Flamenco. Yes! He's the bread... Is he the bread tuber that Flamenco said, Haha, wouldn't it be funny if I told your mom that you don't like her? Haha, and ruined your relationship with your mother? Haha, isn't that... Is that the guy? Okay, that's where I know him from. No, that's Hunter? No. The, oh, it's Xander Hall. Okay, never mind. I don't know who this guy is. I apologize. Apparently, he, he had Discord kittens in and he said, let me, uh, please slop your piss out of the toilet bowl for me, babe. Haha. <laughs> and that got outed. And now he's canceled. So. Salvo made Flamenco leave those kids alone. Oh, he did the, uh, the Penmenco song. <laughs> I remember that. Um, actually, you know what? That's funny. I'll play that. I don't know anything about the... Um, is this not on YouTube? Uh, let's see. Flamenco, leave those kids alone. How's this it? Just chat. This is by Mike the Bike, though. It says music and lyrics by me, commissioned by Teddy Fresh, as or by Psyche Draws. What does Salvo Pink have to do with this, though? Is he Teddy Fresh? Oh yeah, wait. Why does Salvo Pancakes have the the handle Teddy Fresh? The um, the the, oh God! If you don't know, chat actually, um, there is a woman who owns a, a clothing line called Teddy Fresh. Her name is Hila Klein, and this is her, which is why it's a little bit confusing to me. That this guy has the Salvo Pancakes has the title Teddy Fresh. I'm just I'm just a little bit lost. <laughs> if someone could explain this to me, uh, it would it'd clear up this confusion. I would really appreciate it. Hey, Flamenco, leave them kids alone. 
Pretty good song. Oh, God. Seeing the little uh, flamenco dog in a cup thing at the back, that reminds me, I have to play this clip. This was requested by somebody. So, um, if you don't remember, the, uh, it's such a small Sorry, world of, like, all these young kids streaming. Um, that's him wearing the lolly shark frumpy Jew lady costume. Um, but he's talking to Stardust, who is the stupid cunt that uh, <laughs> that uh, Keflo started screaming at because she apologized for the Kiwi for him. I say stupid cunt not because I don't like her, but because that's what Keflo said about her. Um, and apparently Flamenco wants to <laughs> wants to brighten that sweetie's day with a couple Starbucks gift cards uh, if you give him 24 hours notice. And you're just gonna have to listen to this. Stardust, I thought I thought your your attack on Salvo and uh, Snaggle was very funny, and Chat called me a simp. And then uh, like ten minutes later, I guess Medicare tweeted about it or whatever. And uh, maybe it's like, oh, Flam Bros, we got a little too greedy, we got a little too cocky, bro. Okay, let me re actually let me replay this. Uh, I want you, I want you all to suffer. Can I uh, boost the gain on this? Gain plus six. That sounds right. Stardust, I thought I thought your your attack on Salvo and uh, Snaggle was very funny, and Chat called me a simp. And then uh, like ten minutes later, I guess Medicare tweeted about it or whatever. And uh, maybe it's like, oh, Flam Bros, we got a little too greedy, we got a little too cocky, bros. That's funny. Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not sure. Uh, it it might be a good thing. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna also head to bed. So I'm gonna tell people to watch uh, <laughs> oh, no. or maybe uh, other people. But uh, I don't think your chat likes me very much, Flamenco. Well, they should because you're funny. You were you hey. were genuinely funny that night. This night, I was whatever. I don't know. I'm a simp. Uh, I don't understand. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dead sounds. The this um this reminded me of it because you just see the dog back there. Watch, watch the dog in the cup. Uh, I don't understand. You can physically see the man behind the VTuber avatar slump in his chair. And cease moving. His brain is rebooting in real time. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> and there's so many. I was just thinking I was gonna edit this and put in like a bunch of different sound effects. Like, um, is, has this one work? Yeah, this. Uh, I don't understand. Wait, 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 hold up, what about this? Uh, I don't understand. Oh, I wanted like a nice... Yeah. Well, I don't get it. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll redo that one. That one's funny. That sounded... I'm gonna keep doing these until I get bored. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't understand. Well, I don't get it. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not sure. Uh, it just it might be a good. Thing. Uh, I, there's more. There's more you could do with the the silence. It's it is ten seconds. Of, I, I think what he's doing, what happens, is that he's reading his chat because the uh, the interaction before that is awkward. So he has like this lead up where his chat is responding saying like bro you're being awkward and when you're a streamer and your chat is turning against you it's kind of like you're, you're distracted because all these comments are coming in and you're trying to feel like what the fuck just happened but then while he's distracted looking at his chat responding to the first 20 seconds uh, i don't understand he that hits him and he's like he's reading his chat it's coming in and he doesn't realize how awkward that pause is and he's like <laughs> He's, yeah. he's well, dying in it. real time. It's like, no, no, bros. Josh, I'm awkward. Yes.
I know. We got a little understand. too cocky, a little too greedy. That was... That's funny. Uh, I don't understand. A nuclear sound effect? I'm done with the sound effects. If I... Oh, the pull up. <laughs> Uh, I don't understand. Oh, up. Oh, up. Oh, up. I don't get it. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not sure. Uh, it, it might be a good thing. It might be a good thing. Okay. Anyways, this is enough of bashing flamenco. <laughs> oh, well. Um... Okay, oh, and Gem. Okay, so on two hours now, So and I haven't even done Super Chats. Oh, jeez. Oh, me, oh, my. What am I going to do? This is going to be three hours for sure. So, um, Jim did his stream on, the, I think, the 31st. Uh, and it was a year in, in retrospect, and it was, there was multiple parts to it, and I've only seen the the last bit. So he had, like, an open mic night where he just invited people to yell. And uh, apparently it was very emotional, and Jim called it gay and kind of awkward. Then he, then he went over his, like, s medical history. Though the thing is, I, I, I heard a lot of the medical history stuff. I still don't know why he thinks he's going to die. Can the, I apologize if that's insensitive to me to ask, but what, what has happened most recently to make him think I have to stop streaming now because it's like it's not possible for me to to continue. I, I didn't pick up on what that answer was. Uh he has cancer. But I mean like I don't know I don't know what, what he didn't really explain maybe he, intentionally he didn't say like what it was that's stopping him from streaming. Just good. He's getting weaker. Okay. Um, so I heard the, the final bit, the, the last couple hours of the stream where he just kind of did like a year in review. Uh, it's kind of what you expected. He put like pitted people up against each other. It was, it was a typical year in review kind of stream. But then at the end, he's, he, uh, does two things interesting or at least interesting enough to like repeat them independently. Uh, he said that he respected my fight to keep my site up, which was very flattering. Uh, many people sent this to me as soon as it happened. Of course, I appreciate the, the support. Um, and I, I mean, again, it's, it's not, it's not anything special that I do. It's just that I just repeatedly say, no, I observe where the boundaries are and I repeatedly say no. And I do what I can. And I think anybody can do what I, what I do. Anybody uh, with the gumption can, can say, I'm not going to like let people, um, Dict terrorize me into submission, basically. So, I do appreciate the support, though. And he said that, and this I assume is more of a joke. He he passed on his mantle of, I guess, like the the crown of of Medicare to his heirs. And I say it's it's kind of a joke because I I assume it's tongue in cheek. Is like it's kind of gay to to say like here's your heir apparent for the Medicare throne. Um, and the, the picks are strange. He, he picked Pippa Pipkins, the anime VTuber and Ranbot. And I assume that he's just shilling his, his favorite VTuber. What, what do they call those? The, the Moshis? Oshis? Oshanas? Moshanas? What's your, what's the name for the favorite VTuber? Explain this to me, chat. Oshi. Okay. It's an Oshi. It's his Oshi. And then uh, I guess Rambot is also his Oshi because I think Rambot also does like a VTuber shit where, thing where he like plasters his, he plasters his entire screen in like anime girls holding like NSDAP flags. It's very strange. Um, I would say that Rambot is probably one of the most cringe people that currently stream. I, I have no, I, and what's really shocking to me is that people take him seriously and like put up stalwart defenses of him on like the Fediverse and shit. I really, really do not fucking understand how anyone watches Rambot. So I am forced to assume that he, he doesn't want to have an error. He's just going to shout out his Oshi, the rabbit, 
and also pick Ranbot for for the for laughs. I, um, because Ranbot is a truly embarrassing specimen, and I have no idea how he's avoided killing himself. I think that the only reason why Flim, uh, Ranbot has managed not to kill himself is uh, he's too stupid to feel shame. It's kind of like with Ralph. Ralph is too stupid to feel shame. Actually, Ralph feels shame all the time. But he just responds by being Ralph. Rambot literally, I think the, the ammo box dented his skull and injured the part of the brain that feels shame and introspection. And now he's just like listlessly floating through life talking about pregnant anime girls and how to save the white race by being uh, into cartoon pornography. It's truly a, a bizarre person. No, uh, that says nothing about Jim himself. It is, it's kind of strange to me to see, because when I was like young and so, and social media was just starting to be a thing, MySpace peaked in 2008. I remember when the news stories came out about internet grave sites, like memorializing Facebook pages, memorializing MySpace pages. It, it was really weird to hear about because it's like, these things are so new. This technology is so recent and it's such a side piece to life that you're, you're hearing about web pages that outlive people and at the time that was like bizarre it was unheard of it was or rather it was very novel because the technology just came into place and here we are um the by the way the internet was said to be born on january 1st 1983 that's the official uh decided birth date for the internet so the internet i just turned 30 the internet just turned 40 and it's showing its age because now we have people who are coming and going not just from public life online, but uh, from life entirely. And your memories of them are online pages and streams and their body of work and uh, that medium. And it's it's uh, kind of strange to think about. It's a little bit concerning because you realize, oh, well, yeah, even though we're all digital, we still all die. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Um, sort of a tangent, I don't know. Um, I, I know a lot of... I, no, I want to freeze. I've watched him since Internet Aristocrat. Uh, I like his streams. He's funny. Um, he he did his best when he was sort of like riffing off people, and uh, if he is dying, uh, a lot of people miss him, and uh, I'll miss his streams too. I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I should have thought this uh, before I started talking about it because now I'm going to either sound like I'm being too sentimental or I'm being uh, in, in uh, inappropriately dismissive and people are going to be mean. I'm not going to cry. Okay, listen. He's just a dude. I, I like his streams, and the, the difficult part is addressing the fact that people feel very strongly about him without trying to be dismissive about it. I'm crying. Oh, my God. People are... Of seeing, uh, I'm here's here. You know what? Jim might hear this. Jim, show your fucking face. Uh, you, you, I, I, I know for a fact that we fucking got your name years ago, and you lied about it, or you dismissed it, or you made a joke about it. And I remember clear as day, it was posted on Cow fucking years ago. The picture of you uh, on your DUI. That got posted to Cal literally like 10 years ago, and everybody forgot about it because it was unsubstantiated by the person who posted it. I, I have never been able to find this picture of this DUI thing. And when it got found, when it when Zedkiss posts the, the docs and said that he has a DUI on record in this county, if someone emails the sheriff's office, you'll be able to get a copy of the um, mugshot. So, and nobody did it. Nobody had the balls to request this mugshot. And then immediately after Zed made that post, it disappeared. It was squashed because it was so old. Someone, someone after that went out, um, requested for that information to be squashed online, and then nobody could request that mugshot. I guarantee you that was the picture that was posted on Cal in 2010 or whatever the fuck. And I, if I saw it, I would recognize it immediately. If I saw, if I saw the face, I would know immediately. I, I, the, the world needs to know. Put it in your will. Direct <clears throat> Jade to, to answer this question once and for all. That's what, leave Jim alone. <laughs> I just need to know. I was right. Zed was right. Zed, poor Zed. 
His entire thing was doxing people, and then he gave away the dox to this fucking Princess Tinkle Pants, whatever the fuck, on, on the forum. And that idiot hurt the site's reputation, made poor Zed Kiss look like a fool, a darn fool, and we never even got to find the mugshot because nobody would put in the email to get the mugshot. That's what's that you want to talk about what makes me sad about the missed opportunities. We they had it, they had it and they fucked it up. And if I if I had had the balls to just be like, I don't care about your internet daddy, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna be more personally involved because this is this is of interest to people, then it wouldn't have happened. The deepest regret of my life, I'll tell you how it is. Josh, he's dead. <laughs> he's not dead. He didn't he didn't like he didn't like in OBS right there and then the the snowball falls out of his hand and he whispers as as it shatters on the floor gamer gate 2 and then the, the the window flies open and all the snow starts pouring out that's not what happened okay listen okay <laughs> he shattered into dust all right all right all right enough of this enough of this um i like I, I don't have anything against him. I like him. I found a lot of his streams funny. Um, his old stuff with Gamergate was, I mean, like everyone had a little bit of. Uh, everyone knows who he is. So it's like uh, Captain Sparrow. You're, like, You're the worst streamer I've ever seen. Well, you have seen me. Oh, and Keffel's grave dancing was another thing too. Keffel saying that he here's here's a fun thing. I'm gonna give this attention. Um, Keffel's is a fucking retard. We all know this, right? Keffel's is a fucking moron. There is a crazy Asian lady who runs a forum that is like a Kiwi light. And it is, it is dedicated in name to Medicare. It's supposed to be like a revival of the Medicare like hell site that Jim got his name from. Keffels has content on this forum and it's a very small forum that only a couple people post on. And I say lady in quotes. I don't. I cannot confirm or deny if this is a troon or whatever the fuck. They claim to be a lady. I'm going with that. I think they're Asian. Um, they run a website that seals the name Medicur, in both in honor of Jim and also to revive the reputation of this dead hell site from whatever the fuck way back when. They have content on Keffels that dead names Keffels, whatever the fuck that means. Birth names Keffels. That's a funny one. It's not a dead name. It's a birth name. Uh, maybe is that like an intentional juxtaposition in that language? That's what you were called when you were born, motherfucker. Anyways, that content exists on this website. Jim has zero to do with this. Jim has nothing, not no to do with this fucking website. This dude, lady, Asian person of distinction decides to borrow the name, set up a hell site, and put shit on it to try and get a, a community going. Keffels finds this because I assume that, that Keffels Googles his name fucking constantly, found this website called Medicare, and then decided to announce after Medicare says he's dying that Jim has a thread on, on Keffels on his website that Medicare has literally zero to do with. And that is just how fucking stupid and reckless all of these fucking trannies are. Every single one of them is that fucking dumb. And it's like you're, you're grave dance, grave dancing on somebody over a, a, like something they didn't even fucking do because you're too stupid to even figure out who owns this website. You're, you don't even give a fuck. You that's the main thing. You could, I'm sure, Keffels has the IQ, the brain cells rattling around between you know the brain damage, the gray matter scarring from the HRT injections to figure out who owns this website because it takes a cursory glance to figure out who the admins are on the admin page. Um, but they just don't have the gumption to do it. They don't give a fuck. They're just going to say whatever comes to mind because they're emotional, you know, beasts that they don't actually think anything through. So, uh, I don't know. I don't think I can, can beleaguer this anymore. Um, I wish everybody, I, I don't wish harm on anybody. I wish him the best. Uh, I hope that whatever happens, uh, happens as uh peacefully as possible and of course it, the the main thing that sucks i'll tell you this if you want to talk about um things to actually be, be disappointed about the fact that people are going to like like keffels people handling this is like a great thing because it's all it's all like stupid fucks you hate like ralph i told you a thousand times medica i'd piss on your grave no i can't come piss on your grave because then i might get served by 
my Mr. Vickers, if I come up to the United States to visit your grave there in Minnesota, he might be uh, watching your grave to make sure I don't piss on it and try to serve me papers. It's it's all oh yeah, and true and shiny <laughs> couples complaining that Medicare coined the term true sign. It's like all the people who shouldn't be happy are happy, and I don't like that. I want these people to not be happy. Oh, I didn't even talk about Ralph. You know what? Fuck it. I don't want to talk about Ralph. I really don't want to. Ralph um is having a Ralph's Christmas here. Okay, you think your Christmas was bad with your relatives? Ralph had a big card fight with Pansu's um father. And now uh, he, he has basically isolated Pansu from his, her entire extended family and has told Pansu's, Pansu's sister fucks a Puerto Rican. And he said that uh, she should bring that Puerto Rican to come kick his ass the next time he's in the United States. So we might see Pansu's sister's Puerto Rican boyfriend beat the fuck out of Ralph if he goes to Ralph Mania. He, has, he says he's going to have like armed guards at his stupid indie wrestling event this month because he wants to make sure that nobody serves him while he's there and he has to keep out this livid Puerto Rican who's going to face stomp his fucking stupid ass. Um, so when that happens, it'll be instant karma. Uh, Medicare may be dead by the time it happens, so maybe I'll, <clears throat> I'll do a special special stream uh you can say medicare's dead all you want but you're the one that got your face curb stomped by a puerto rican a, a shitty indie wrestling venue and that'll be fun and that's that i'm not talking about ralph anymore i can't i i've, I've been going on for t two two hours it's gonna be three hours and that's the, that's basically the gist ralph is continuing to burn as many bridges as possible and it's very funny as always so um in honor of Medicare, uh, I will be reading super. <laughs> I will be reading super chats. Uh, if you don't care to hear the super chat segment, you can now tune out. And <laughs> um, I'll start with the one donation alert that I got before. I got it like last year. I don't, um, for some reason. Yeah, like on the thirteenth. Where is it? Where did it go? Oh no, I got it on the first of this year. Someone tipped me like on the first. That was their first thought at 1 a.m. on the new year was to send me a super chat. A turf um for $16 says on Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Josh. I couldn't do without you and my fellow Kiwis. Please send best wishes to your mom because she sounds really cool. Lots of love from the UK XX. So, even though you're from the UK, I thank you for the new year, which is um I, I hope that your new year was joyous for, for everyone. Happy new year, by the way, to everybody. Finkel Tard for $100 says, Happy new year, Josh. Hope your 2023 it was a lot less dramatic than 2022. I got a good feeling about this year, boys. I got a good feeling. This is the year. I think I said it last year, too. It doesn't matter. I'm saying it this year. I'm going to lock it in. 2023, best year ever. This is not, this is not the year. Of, I mean, what, what is it? The Chud was like... Uh, it was, was who we're rooting for, right? The Chud was the good guy. Am I like a retard? I always thought the Chud was the good guy that we all rooted for. So this is like can't be the year of the Chud. That was last year. Twenty twenty three is the year of the something. Chud is good. Year of the retard. Year of the retard. I like that. Let's get a ring to it. Twenty twenty three is the the year of the the retard. The retard strikes back. Thank you, Twinkle Tard, for the one hundred dollars. Uh, David's 877 for $50 says they say reducing trans fats is good for your health. Here's the fewer trans fats in the new year. It's true, actually. And we have to look at where our morbid obesity is the most. Um, you know, people in Missouri are, have a lot of trans fats in their diets. Uh, luckily, I heard that they're using new injections to help get rid of trans fats in places like Missouri, where trans fats are an epidemic. Um, so Missouri is starting the year off strong by cutting out trans fats, and we're all better off for it. Waddle D for 10 says, uh, Welcome back, Josh. Thank you for your continued work over the holidays, and I hope you and chat have a prosperous 2023. Can you perhaps play the T-Dub classic Mario Be Playing as your outro? Is that like a real song? Is this like a low-cal song? What is this? Mario might be super, but I'm super duper with a big tuber. Cause no one's gonna hit it like me. Cause Mario has. It's like a, I feel bad. This autistic boy was definitely bullied to fucking death after this song. 
Uh, no, I will not be playing that as my outro, but thank you. Um, Sand for Five says, it's shit, it's all shit, it sounds like shit. Um, uh, probably talking about the stuff I talked about earlier in the stream, which is kind of depressing. I should have saved the depressing shit for the end of the stream, I guess. I don't know. I don't know when to talk about depressing shit, but yes. Yeah. Never give up. If you give up, and... Uh, what did I say? I said, I said it on New Year's. I'll quote myself, because it was very poignant. I did a good job writing it. Even though I was kind of drunk when I wrote it. Happy New Year. It's been rough this year, but stay optimistic, friends. If we're fucked and you think we're fucked, nothing changes. If we're fucked and you're optimistic, nothing changes. If you're not, if we're not fucked and you think we're fucked, we might become fucked. And if we're not fucked and you stay optimistic, we make it through. Uh, with the community, with the whole society, with everything in the future, never give up. So you must, you must never succumb to the feeling of it's shit. You must stay, you must be a positive poly in all, in all walks of life because the worst that can happen is that things don't change. Mutt for 2689 says, Hey Josh, glad to have you back on air. Wishing you all the best for the new year. Quick shout out to my friend Scrub. He's an avid listener. Well, shout out Scrub. Uh, happy new year to both of you and thank you very much. Colia Dante for 15 says, YouTube chat patched out the Unicode uh, Niger loophole. It's over. Is this true? The, the Total Retard War font is uh, apparently patched out on YouTube, so you cannot make fun in words out of that. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. <clears throat> Nearer for two says, Dong Gon emails the ISPs and other infrastructure parks the spiel about Kiwi being hosted by an AUP violation. Thoughts on that? Also, whatever is AUP and how does it keep on working? AUP means acceptable use policy. Every tech company has an AUP. It basically outlines why they can cancel your service. One of the things that is included in every single AUP in the entire world is that we can cancel your service for any reason or no reason at all, up to their sole discretion. So um, they include various lines. It just gives them an out of any contract, basically. Um, however, I will say this, if there is some huge policy violation that we could correct to stay on these services, they have never, ever, not once emailed me and said, dear Josh, if you simply removed this content, we could keep you on. It has never been raised that the Christchurch stuff was the issue. It has never been raised that the, um, that doxing is an issue. Never, ever have I received any communication from any of these tier one internet service providers saying that if I removed X, I could stay on. It is 100% the complaint volume. These same ISPs transit monkey torture sites, child pornography sites, uh, neo-Nazi sites, explicit avowed, like let's overthrow the Polish government and reinstate like a fascist government, a dictatorship because we um, love Hitler and shit. Those sites are all fine because they don't have complaint volume. We have complaint volume. So it doesn't matter how law-abiding we are. It doesn't matter if we stay within their AUP. It is simply the complaint volume, which is why I say the response is to complain louder. We now must become Karens. We must go after these people and say, You're, you, I am a customer of Quest. I want to access this website. You will fix it or I am leaving. And if I can't leave because you have a monopoly in this area, I, I will complain to the FCC. I'll complain to uh, state FCC. I'll complain to congressmen. I will complain to whoever the fuck will listen to me until you fix this shit. Because that's the, the reason why they turn it off is because that's to get people to stop complaining. If they turn it back on, that's to get people to stop complaining. You must be willing to complain, to put your name on documents and say, fuck you, buddy. Uh, otherwise, you'll lose everything because you're afraid. Uh, pronouns are Nick Her for 15 says, uh oh, based alert. And then there is a video, and I swear to fucking God. You know, your mother's, you and your mother decided on, on Friday to attack a fundamental belief of mine. What's that belief? Okay. What's that belief? Your mother. What's that belief? Your mother knows that I do not, I, I believe for this furry thing is a deviant belief. Yeah, and you cut me off financially for that? Yep. <laughs> Good job, Dad. What's required of us? Uh, thank you. Uh, Carlito for five says, shout out to my nigga Lysol. Shout out Lysol. Uh, Amanda Morris for five says, please save me Joshua Moon. Heart emoji. No. Is there anything? There's. I mean, fuck Digibro. Into Lollycon, Italian, and fucked Ethan Ralph. That's didn't they also didn't didn't Amanda fuck some other gross schlubby guy that's like a part of Dick Circle? Didn't she, did she fuck um the fat dude Riley? That's some that I mean that's that's no Amanda you gotta cross that out of the book. Not happening. Sorry. 
Gator can save her. Gator, Gator, G Amanda, you gotta go for my bit, my boy Gator. Gator's been working so hard. He needs a heart sweet. He's going after this fucking spooky weeb trash chick. Like it's not gonna happen. You, he will take care of Ralph's child. He loves Ethan Ralph, even if you won't admit it. Go for my boy Gator. Gator can save you. Ocean for ten says, "Keep fighting, Josh. Please don't give up. I don't plan on it." Thank you. Uh, Maddie Archiver for 10 says, late happy birthday. Slobbermont got taken out. We're now under Maddie's Sadie and Fatty. Oh, that's the... <laughs> uh, the archive channel got deleted again. Um, I reached out to the Tanuki Joshua Graham guy, uh, and I'll probably reach out to Large Marge. Um, I think it's Large Marge. The people who uh, run our archive channels, and what I'm going to try to do is get some clips on YouTube that are um, like... YouTube safe and I'll run ads on them so I can pay people who are doing the clips um, for their work. Cause it sucks that the archive channels just keep getting nuked over and over again. Um, and I'll try to figure out something where, Oh no. Okay. Um, where, no, sorry. It's not large Marge. It's a uh, big mama, big mama, very, very similar names, but completely different people. Uh, big mama is the one that runs the archive channel on the Q farms. I'll try to work something out where we can have clips so that people can find the streams on YouTube. Because that's how, if you don't know, um, this is how it works. You, 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 you use YouTube like a horror. YouTube is a horror. It does not deserve your respect or your love or your care. It exists so that you can get on it. You can find new people, point them to your website, point them to your Telegram, and uh, be ready to part ways at any given time and maybe make money if possible. It does not, you don't, you don't rely on YouTube. So <clears throat> I want to try to get something up where people can clip and stuff. Um, so I can have some YouTube princes no matter what, even if the archives keep getting deleted, but they are, uh, it's Maddie, Sadie, Maddie's Sadie and fatty. That's a horrible, I, there's literally no way to pronounce Maddie's Sadie and fatty in a way that a human being can listen to it and understand how to spell this. <laughs> We'll have to we'll have to work on the branding, uh, my dude. Near for two says you kind of rushed off that liquid Chris segment too quick. Dum dum. Here's he showed his face. In my opinion, he looks at him. All right. Okay, well, I'll look at it. Um, let's see. You are nothing compared to me. I am the true and honest creator of you, Christian Weston Chandler. You will not be me. You will not replace me. And okay. how dare you say all those things to my true and honest science, you fans. So this is like 10 years later. I want to kind of do Obviously. a thing. Right? So this is Liquid Chris. Um, I think it is the same guy. He looks so much like him. This is uh, how he was in his old videos. And I, I have to show you something at this point in time. There is a picture of Casey. Uh, this is a true story. I'm not bullshitting you. This is Casey, I think. And Casey was fat, which is in retrospect, when you listen to the Chris calls where she's like, Chris, you have to start exercising. How am I supposed to make you my husband when you're like, um, when you're like not in, in, in shape and stuff? Uh, this is also, I, th I think. Yeah, I think this is her. Oh no, this picture has been like deleted or something. Hold up, is there like a I might just have to pull this low res image and run with it cuz I think that this image has been like destroyed from the internet or some shit. This was also Casey. There are pictures of them um together and they look really bad, but there's also like more recent pictures where they look okay. They they've been together. They literally met each other trolling Chris. I think this is them, according to this. Apparently, and he's like a doctor now, so it's kind of strange if this is him that he's come back to trolling Chris. Very very interesting. This is old Chris lore. I might be fucking it up because it's been so long. But this was a hot point of discussion was um, Casey and Liquid Chris's relationship way way back when. Uh, don't leave them alone, uh, kids. Don't go fucking with them. He's a doctor. He's 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 curing COVID. He's making he's making uh, vaccines that work. Vaccines work. And, and liquid. This guy, 
This guy is making them. He's curing us of our of our illnesses. Okay, leave him alone. Uh, Internet best friend for five thirty eight says, "Hey Jersh, now that the great Internet Daddy of Gamergate has passed away from the Internet, would you please step forward to become king of the sector? However, you'll inherit watching anime. Thanks. Good luck. Have fun." Um, I can't. I literally. I think anime is so poisonous, so to toxic to the mind that even if I was offered like six figures a year to watch like anime as like a part of my routine i don't think i would accept it it's just so bad for you everyone every total fuck every person who like has who gets cancer and dies who is flamenco who is suddenly has like a, a terrible midlife crisis and, and buys a mustang they all watch anime you know what i mean it's very strange i wouldn't do it i don't i don't trust it I'm, it's like it's like uh, I'm just I'm just not not getting it. Simple as. Anonymous for one says being mad at the internet lowercase i internet is dumb, but the internet lowercase i internet being mad at you is dumber. Huh? Is this in reference to Rikada? The internet's not mad at Rikada. We're simply disappointed. Anonymous for five says Andrew Tate is a British mulatto. That's true. He is. And as we as we discussed, he chose to be British, which is the sin here. Pope Urban for 10 says, when do we get a QE Farms EU4 multiplayer campaign? Also, you could touch Santos if you didn't already. He's a riot. I don't know who Santos is. I thought about doing like a grand strategy game where like everybody plays a different country. That could be fun. I think that the multiplayer for all those Paradox games is fucking nightmarish though. Trying to get like a, a hundred people in to play every nation on EU4 would like be a disaster. Though I think with Vicky, Victoria 3, it's probably more doable. Um, I call dibs on the United States if we do that, though. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm kind of bad at the game. I, actually, I call dibs on China. I want to breathe. I want to be the great ting. I want to be China. Uh, Andrew Tate for 25 says, "Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I know the rules. One drop, and you're pretty. You're pretty black, my dude. You're pretty Persian looking." Anonymous for five says, and "Thank you, though." Uh, Anonymous for five says, "Greta's dopey potato face makes me diamonds. She's twenty now, so it's okay. That's really fucking gross." And Greta Thunberg is one of the most genuinely unattractive women. Like, who's not like Laura Loomer? Laura Loomer is definitely uglier than Greta Thunberg, but Greta Greta has like such a what, what's it called? Like, it's like neonatal. It's like a natal. What do you call like Japanese features that make them look like babies? It's like natalist features or whatever. She looks like a fetus, basically. I'm I'm saying if you're attracted to Greta Thunberg, I don't care if she's forty. Um, you're pretty fucking sus, bro. No, not fetal alcohol syndrome. It, it's it's a specific word that refers to how Asian face neoteny. She has a neonetic face, right? Neotenic face. Really fucking creepy. Um. Don't talk about that. People will assume the worst about you. Getting awkward too says the funny part about Tate's arrest is that the only reason why we got caught is because the pizza boxes he had in this video were linked to a local pizza chain in a specific town in Romania. Amazing upside. Um, you got that off a tweet from a tranny, which is shame on you for believing what a tranny says. We talked about how that's bullshit. You super chatted before we talked about how that's bullshit because uh, you read it and you read it on Reddit and they copy pasted it from a tranny's Twitter account and now you paid two dollars to look like a fucking retard. So thank you very much, Reddy Oct. A Reddit Oc, Danty Oc, Reddit Oc. Anonymous for 30 says, Have a 30 for your 30. Josh, remember, folks, every donation makes Liz Fong Dingle Dong seethe. Buy Retard War Bonds today. Thank you very much. Remember to buy the patches. I'm going to quit the sale um, when they hit a certain amount. Because uh, I'm, I, I'm, I've, uh, there's 500 in stock. They're already going out, and then I'll have to get more. So if you order now, you'll have to, to wait. I apologize. Um, they already sold out. <laughs> I should have bought more, I guess. Uh, my Seek a Lither for 20 says, KOP analogs do a stream about him in exotic accents. One but not forgotten in BSV. Join me. You're briefly mentioned around 5430. King OP brought the world together. <sighs> so Seek a Lither, if you don't know, is a top pay, was a top pay pig for Ethan Ralph. And now he does his own streams. So since he just started, he's like a E-list wannabe e-celeb, and apparently he has King of Pole on, and he has t and and Brightside Viking, a DSP a log, uh, and King of Pole is like a, a retard, and he has paid me twenty dollars to listen to his stream on my stream because they mentioned me, and I am doing the math the math mathematics in my head to decide 
if twenty dollars is enough money for me to listen to one but not forgotten brightside viking king of pole and seek a loather talk about me i will i will listen to literally 15 seconds of this i will uh, 20 seconds one dollar per second so you better hope that your timestamp is right on fucking point let's see what this is 5430 this is on Gunt News Network. I'll shout that out in case you're you're curious. Fifty three four four fifty four thirty. Okay, I want to fuck this up. You got twenty seconds. I'm counting. Really get under his skin because I think that's that's the guy who provoked the most uh, of all people. Oh I've yes, seen. yes, yeah. Like he pokes him and he literally said, "I have your IP," and starts claiming some bullshit like he got into Kiwi Farms and like got all the IP addresses or something. And what do you know? Yes, After, yes, yes, IP yes. author saga. <laughs> yes, IP authors. And after this, what do you know? No DMs him and tells, tells him, did you fucking do something to my website? Yeah, you're not supposed to be doing okay, this. Apparently this is old lore where someone claimed to have an IP from somebody. And I followed this up because I, I would, asking how he would claim to have this information. And then I, I bullied him for it because he fucking lied. And he pissed me off by doing so. This happens sometimes in the retard sphere. Not enough shekels. It's true. I gave, I gave him 30 seconds. I'm, I'm, there's a reason why they call me Generous Josh. I'll put it that way. My reformed Orthodox rabbi, Bill Clinton, for two, says the message Jim got really honed into me how isolated and need of a friend people are. You're going to be rich, relevant, XKCD. Um, yeah, I mean, people... Oh, it's a stone toss comment? What? Oh, I'm bored. I'm going to hang out with my friends. Podcast episode 97. So he's listening to a podcast. That's his friends. Um, yes. Uh, if you are a young male and you're depressed and you want to tune out or watch anime or whatever the fuck, I would advise you make a male friend. It's up, up to you how to do this. But like one of the main things that happened in my life that really improved my quality of life and my general overall happiness is that I met a guy playing Dota 2 and uh, he was... Slightly older. I won't say, I won't say much because he might be insecure about that. But he's a little, he's a little bit older than I am, and he provided some bro some bro code insights that uh, helped me deal with whammon, helped me adjust to adult life, and I probably would be a complete fuck up if I had not have heard the the wisdom that the older male in my life had to had to partake. So it's all you all you bastard sons out there, such as myself. Um, get a hobby that exposes you to older men because they will tell you things that will save you a lot of time figuring out yourself. Groomed. Look, and I'm, I'm, I mean, get a hobby that's not Discord because the men you meet in that are going to try to butt fuck you. Get a real hobby where you can report someone to the police if they try to butt fuck you. Uh, Redditoc, formerly known as Dantioch for two, says, and essentially the trance will be gone and instead a haunted alpaca burial ground. It's true. This, this house in uh, Neo, uh, Neo Denver is built on an ancient alpaca burial ground by ancient Troon Indians, and now it's haunted. Uh, Haramburger for two says, sub sandwiches are just long hamburgers. Strange fortune cookie message, which are themselves just shit posts you can eat. Happy New Year, Josh. Get a seared bite, my treat. Thank you, Haramburger. Um, sub sandwiches are better than ham. I would say subs are better than hamburgers. Hamburgers are okay. They can be very good with some like jalapenos and sauce on them, but a good sandwich that has banana peppers on it, that's, that's something that you can enjoy slowly. Eric Rids for five says that Harvard Troon also made up stories about the attack on a power station in North Carolina and the club Q shooting being about drag news. That's true. But they all, other people did that. Other people immediately put out the club Q shooting. Ben Collins went on fucking network television and said that the Kiwi farms and their transphobic harassment campaigns were right before this. So he kind of implied that someone from my website shot up club Q. I really hope that Ben Collins burns in hell. I know he's already going there because he's uh, of a certain disposition He's of a certain uh, nasal phenotype, but uh, for real, for real, lock that shit in. This dude has no soul. Uh, er oh, Frog God for five says, hello, Mr. Moon. I got the patches. When the bombs drop, I'll remember to flash the patch so we can all see who survived. And maybe even start keeping firms all over again in the form of cave paintings. <laughs> Look, don't worry. When, before the bombs drop, I'll do my final extraction. I'll take the hard disk. I'll put it on a platinum... Uh, 
memory tape or whatever and shoot it into space and aliens will find it and laugh at Ethan Ralph. Uh, Redditoc, formerly known as Dantioch for two, says, wasn't aware the pizza thing with Tate was fake news. Yeah, no shit. Also, look on the bright side with Vordrak, at least his country is going to implode soon. Hey, I mean, I'm just saying, if something happens with... I remember when um, I, said, I, I, I said something about Muslims on my forum, and Vordrak posted pictures of, like, a burning Quran on, like, a grill and said that that was allegedly me burning a Quran on the grill, and he posted this with, like, my name and face and address, and I legit think that Vordrak tried to get me assassinated by Islamists. Because he's so fucking desperate to hide the fact that he uh, abused little girls on an Evanescence messaging forum like 15 fucking years ago. And accused Evanescence of facilitating child pornography to the mainstream news, which they reiterated because the British news is, are unscrupulous retards. And uh, that got Evanescence to shut down their own fan forum because of him. I think that's he was so pissed off of, about that news being on the internet still that he tried to get someone assassinated by Muslims. Uh, inshallah. You're a Nick Gurr for five says Americans liberated Mauthausen, Dachau, Buchenwald, Dora Mittelbrau, and Flossenburg. The British liberated Bergen, Baselin, all death camps, all in Germany. Don't believe done pull infographics. Well, there you go. You're a Nick Gurr coming out with the, the straight facts for those of you interested in your Holocaust history, such as Ethan Klein uh, and his wife, who, if you don't know, uh, these two people met each other at a Holocaust uh, museum in Israel. I think it was before, while she was still in service. Though. I think she was still in the IDF. Don't quote me on that, though. Uh, uppercase I internet spelled with a lowercase I for $4 for $2. <laughs> Uppercase I, uppercase, lowercase I, internet for $4 for $2 says, How can a terminally online shut in find friends and social life in a foreign country where he doesn't speak the language or know the culture? Asking for my pal Josh. Uh, number one, I speak English. If you don't know, everyone below the age of 30 speaks English. If you speak English and move to a foreign country, you'll very easily find people your age who speak English because everybody speaks English. So step one, speak English. Uh, step two, go to an expat bar. Oh, the, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to blow out your eardrums with my Gila Klein clip. I forgot that the gain is still very loud on my, uh, on my OBS. <laughs> Great Dane for 538 says, Hey, Josh, what are your thoughts on Kiro the Wolf returning to YouTube? Um, I think that that won't succeed. I think that he's a dog fucker and everyone knows it. And he will not be able to come back to YouTube ever. Oh, hi. Hi guys, and welcome to a new video. I know it's been a while. I've been trying to do so. This has two, he's renamed his channel to Radiance. He's using a VTuber avatar. It's like a 3D wolf thing. Um, he has 56 upvotes. So I assume that the downvotes are in the hundreds and only 2000 people have seen this. Subbed and belled. Used a random alt account to comment cause reasons, but glad you still exist. You're, oh, he has like 16 comments. So, I guarantee, like, he has been curating the fuck out of his comment section. And he can't give up on his channel. Like, he can't just come back on, like, a different name and rebuild his channel because he wants to have those eight, you know, 100,000 plus subscribers still. So, he just refuses. Um, I wish him pestilence and misery. That's how I feel about this. Thank you, Great Dane. Whimsy for 10 says, Remember to vote in pencil so we can correct your mistakes. Great tip. Always vote in pencil chat. Uh, it doesn't matter anyways, because they don't even fucking look at that shit. It goes straight into the trash. You Have fun. Uh, thank you, though. Ruggy for five says, will this year be the last year, the year for the low tech stream? One can hope. Either way, glad to have you back. Maybe. Uh, things go well. Das Baburzkin for two says, look at me. You're the daddy now. No, don't do this. I can't. I'm not sure I'm ready to be a father. Uh... Redditoc, for, for, formerly known as Dantioc for two, says a possible cope slash reply Rikada will respond about getting a hobby is so that he does have a hobby already, which is painting Warhammer 40k miniatures, which is probably not enough and he needs another. Um, he obviously needs a hobby that engages him in the way he needs to be engaged. Uh, like I said, look, if, if my dude is happy, like, fucking the hoes and shit, that's fine. 
don't fuck your fans. Don't bring it onto your channel. Don't let people show their tits in locals. Don't have issues where people are crying about revenge pornography in your Discord channel. Don't bring this unnecessary drama into your life. You want to go fuck a bunch of hoes, go to Jamaica, say, hey, ho, I'll pay you 50 bucks to fuck you. She'll say, yes, massa. And then, boom, you got your dick wet. That does not need to be on live stream. It does not need to be on locals. It doesn't need to be recounted about with Drexel on some Manosphere podcast later down the road. It can be left on the fucking sheets where it belongs. All right. That all I'm saying, all I'm saying, just leave it where it belongs. You can have it. Your hobby can be fucking hose, but don't fuck your fans. Maker's Mark representative for five says you said this forever ago. And some of it Maker's Mark is not a rye whiskey. It is a wheated bourbon. It is a mash bill actually it contains no rye grain whatsoever. It's autism, but it's been bothering me ever since. Well, first let's, uh, Let's acknowledge this, everybody, everybody in chat. Maker's Mark, as Maker's Mark representative, wants you to know that Maker's Mark is not a rye whiskey. It is a wheated bourbon. Its mash bill contains no rye grain whatsoever. I think I Googled Maker's Mark and it said rye whiskey, though. Small batch bourbon whiskey. I guess I just saw whiskey and I just said rye, like as a force of habit, because I don't know what I'm talking about. I apologize. Maker's Mark. I was completely wrong about Maker's Mark. Thank you. Uh, Colt Dante for 15 says, I don't give a fuck what people close to me think. Nick, the no, the baldo is not a cuck cage or keda. Remember that Nick's gay bar birthday outing took place on his swingers night. Um, I mean, I can believe he's a swinger. Like I said, I don't care. If that's what he's into, if that's what his wife's into, I, I personally think that when you involve your wife and other women in your relationship, uh, it's going to cause problems. It's going to unnecessarily complicate your life, and it's going to invite problems into your relationship that it does not need and that you could get away. You know, It's just completely fruitless. Um, but if he wants to do that, fine. And then if he has issues with that in real life, you can deal with that privately. Right now, if he fucks around with these hoes and his locals and they accuse him of sexual harassment, if they accuse him of revenge pornography, I'll, give, I'll, I'll explain this. In Section 230, right, it says that um, very explicitly they added a provision that says no part of this law shall be interpreted to inhibit law enforcement from enforcing child or, or sex trafficking laws is what it says. It has a, it has a very explicit carve out for sex trafficking laws and uh, sex offenses. So like this, this shit like this scares payment processors. It scares hosts like rumble because they don't have any protections whatsoever when it comes to uh, sexual content because they modified section two thirty. You don't want this. It, it is a hurricane in a bottle that you cannot undo. Uh, so I, I just don't understand. I really don't understand. It's, I understand the female attention is exciting as a man, but it's, um, you just, you just like in the same breath, he says, I'm happy with my life. I have accomplished a lot. My family is doing well. Well, then that should tell, it's like when you take anti, you take antipsychotics and you don't feel crazy anymore. And you think, well, fuck, I'm feeling fine. Why do I need to take my antipsychotics? You forget to take your antipsychotics. You have a breakdown. Then you jump in front of a train. You're, if, if you're, everything is fine. Don't change anything. Don't modify the structure of your, of your routine. Okay. Cause things are going good. You've, you've found something that works. Keep at it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyways. Anonymous for Pipe says, Rikeda is Ralph 2.0. Calling it now. I wouldn't go that far. Even the worst case scenario. That's a long way to fall. Uh, Ropana. Thank you, though. Ropana for three says, Happy belated birthday, Josh. I hope 2023 will be an awesome year for you and Q Farms. I'm glad to see Maddie up on an air. I'm looking forward to what the future holds. Have a great weekend. Republic of Korea flag. Thank you, Ropana. You too. I hope you have a great year. I'm also excited to see what new bullshit I have to deal with. <laughs> uh, Kaku for one says, Josh, the animal you're thinking of is the Kaku. It lays its eggs in other birds' nests and breaks the ones that are already there. They even mimic egg color. The word cuck came from this bird. Um, but the thing about the Kaku is that the other brood parasites, they just let the brood take care of it entirely. A home wrecker, which is the word I think I was thinking of, um, specifically not only removes the children from the, the relationship, it removes the woman. So, like, because birds, you know, animals don't have relationships like people do. 
So it's a different kind of brood parasite where it's a it's a woman that looks for a relationship that already is functional, already works well, and simply tries to replace the woman in the functional relationship because now that the other woman has determined that this guy is worth sticking around with, she knows automatically that that's probably going to be the case for her as well. Or at least she hopes. I think that there is a real psychological evolutionary thing that exists in in these in the homewrecker mindset um, that's unique to humans. Uh, Kiryuma15 says, Chantal is my racist hero. Mine too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anonymous for Tesla. Uh, talk about the gun hiding in Mexico and pissing off Hearst's fiance in a new blood feud that happened because he destroyed his cheap wrestler's belt. Oh, the one thing I forgot to mention about Ralph um, that is worth mentioning for those of you who have bothered to stick around this long. Um, Harry Morris has his mother's ashes. He has picked, he didn't just have all his wrestling shit that he's now destroying. Harry Morris has Sandra's urn with the ashes in it. So it's like, okay, you want to piss off this dude who has all your fucking bullshit, gay, cheap ass, Chinese made wrestling merchandise. Who gives a shit? Why the fuck would you piss off the dude who has your mother's ashes? That motherfucker at any second can pull out that urn and make chocolate milk with them. There is nothing stopping Harry Morris from doing this. Ralph is a retard. Like just for a sec like and for the record, by the way, you look at all the dumb shit that he has in Mexico. All the dumb shit that he brought with him. He could not find space for Sandra's urn to Mexico. He's gonna leave it with Harry Morris. Like you can think of any like it's a small box. So you can look at anything that happens in his house. He took the fucking bowling trophy that he gave himself. He ordered online a bowling trophy that is several times larger than an urn. And he brought that to Mexico. But he forgot his mother's ashes with someone who is now a blood enemy. How do you... Literally, if you were a script writer, you would not write this shit. Because you would not be able to to suppress your um your suspension of disbelief to say... Why would he take the bowling trophy but not the ashes? Like that doesn't make any sense. This this plot point is contrived and stupid. Obviously, he would take his mother's ashes before the stupid plastic Chinese bowling trophy that he bought for himself. That's ridiculous. But no, it's real life, and Ralph is fucking dumber than a cartoon character. Unbelievable, chat. Unbelievable. Thank you. Uh Winston Fujimori for five says Flamenco sleeps with all the women VTubers. He cream pies Sheena. He smashed Tenma. He spit roasted Pippa with ghost politics. And he wants to arena for his mommy fetish. By the way, yes, I watch all of them. Press can we get an F in chat for this guy's life, which is already over, whether he wants to admit it or not? And see some Fs in chat for this guy who's dead inside. <laughs> Um, Miles Edgelord for 1589 says, Hello, Josh. Glad to have you back and Happy New Year. Please wish me luck in learning how to code Java and WordPress. I wish you in the farms good luck, good pizza, and whatever else you need. Um, I think you're confused because WordPress is written in PHP. I think you mean to say JavaScript and WordPress because JavaScript is what a browser uses to animate stuff and make a web page interactive. Java is a programming language that predates JavaScript that's used in uh, um, phone apps for Chrome devices or uh, Google devices. I wish you luck because you're apparently going to need it. JavaScript is what you're looking for. Um, and PHP is what WordPress uses as a programming language. But good luck. Um, and don't shoot out. Cook of Doom for five says Ranbot is a good man and the savior of the Hwat race. Don't you dare insult him or Futanari ever again. Oh, I'll be sure to avoid it. I don't want to upset Ranbot by mentioning how it's weird for grown married men with children to fetishize a pregnant Japanese little girl and drape her in Nazi flags because it conflates with his psychotic obsession with a dead empire. I would hate to do that, chat. I would hate to do that. We all have to love and respect Ranbot and his mental illness. Because he's a handicapped person. And that would be a hate crime to make fun of him for being fucking retarded. Uh, Winston Fujimori, back from the dead, says, uh, for 10, says, Since you refused to play my dono that was solely Pipkin, Pippa Pipkins in your last stream, can you play this? It was featured by everyone's Texas Boomer. He said that this is me magic striking again or some shit. What is this? Said I don't have to play, not, but I do. I'm not playing Ghost Politics singing a song 
with with the fucking anime rabbit. I'm just not doing. It. I'll play like a second. You said of that it. this is. God. Okay, that's all you get. Thank you. Uh, Yves St. Laurent for one says, in honor of Jim's memory, which anime will you be watching? Also show King Cobra's Gord mugshot. Okay. Um, I don't have his mugshot offhand. I apologize. Wait, someone has tagged me in his thread. They may perhaps be trying to show me the mugshot. Can we do this? Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. Is it in the other thread? Oh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Ah, no, that's a Photoshop one. I want the original. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, geez, I'm scroll. I'm scrolling. I'm gonna. I'm gonna scroll. Why? Are, there's so many Photoshops and none of the original. Is it on this page? One more page. If it's not on this page, I give up. Um. Let's see. Here. Okay. Here we go. This is K Cobra's mugshot from Christmas Day, arrested for public intoxication, I believe. Thank you. Um, I'm not watching the anime, by the way. Anonymous for one says, will you do a stream on Jim if he does die? Ah, oh, jeez. No, that would that would be that would be too annoying. Um, there's no way that I could approach it to to not cause bullshit needless bullshit for myself that um could be avoided by simply not doing anything sometimes doing nothing is the best option anonymous for one say second like for 15 says 2023 or for 15 says 2023 is the year of tnd happy new year what the fuck is tnd A sta TV station in Darwin, Australia. Tetrium non deter, a law excluding middle, a law in logic. The national desk, the needle drop, tomorrow never dies, traditional neighborhood development, a currency of Tunisia, the airport Alberto Delgado in Trinidad, Cuba, D&D ISO 639 code of the Angostaris Tenebo variety of the Uwa language. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay. That makes more sense than any of the things that I, that I thought of. <laughs> um, Winston Fujimori for two says again, back from the dead. Fun fact, 2023 is the year of the rabbit in the Chinese calendar. Let's go boys. This is true. It is actually the year of the rabbit. He has again, sent me something from Pippa kit pins. How much did he give me? Two dollars. The Pippa acknowledges that it's the year of the rabbit. I'll summarize that to you. Thank you. Anime for five says, I did this to Jim. I'm so sorry. You should be fucking sorry. Everyone should know that you have blood on your hands. You cold blooded killer. Thank you very much. Uh, Carney man for two says happy new year. Josh X Chantel. You can buy some Bon Jovi toothpicks with this $2 after she goes ham on that Turkey. There's some weird sexual energy about toothpicks. I don't know why Bon Jovi. I don't understand what, why, why you say half of what you did in this message. Thank you, though. Uh, to who is for pedophiles for $10 says, Happy New Year, Josh. If you want to reinforce your prevalent views of Tranime, you should check out Oni-chan wa Oshime. It's bad. Um, I will search this very briefly and ruin... Uh, I'll use a brave so that it doesn't get put into my search history. Onime, I'm now your sister. Big Brother is Done... Oh, the second one is Big Brother is Done For is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Neko Tofu. Cat Tofu. This series has been serialized online. The series follows Mahiro Oyama, an otaku living with his scientist sister, Mihari. One day she wakes up as a... He wakes up as a young girl a result of one of Mihari's experiments. Mihari must now live to learn as a middle school girl, all while live, making new friends in school. So is he like... Is he like, um... A middle school-aged boy when he's, like, gender-swapped by his little sister? Or... So if his younger sister is, like, a scientist, is it, like, the jokes that she's a child scientist? Or is he, like, an adult man that is now, like, a middle school boy? I'm kind of curious if this is like super deviant or extraordinarily pedophilic deviant. Um, 
Miharu Oyama. This is like sh porn. This is like, like, it's not like sexual when I search this character's name, but like all the frames from the manga are like very clearly just to like get your dick hard if you're like into trannies. Yeah, there's like pants. Yeah, this is fucking weird. This is weird. You people are, I can't, I honestly cannot fucking believe you people watch this shit for real. It's, it's fucking crazy to me. Like, what's wrong with you? Xi Jinping for five says, if you want me to be my friend, you, and I didn't, by the way, there's no picture of him like as a boy. So I can't, I still don't know if this is like a middle school boy to middle school girl thing or if they're like adults, which is extra creepy. Um, Xi Jinping for five says, uh, if you want to be my friend, you better be able to tell me your opinion on the best character in the romance of the three kingdoms. It's a good TV series, so you have no excuse. I've never even heard of this. Oh, it's one of the great novels from China. Um, okay, I don't want to drag this on for too much longer, this episode, but there's a famous, um, uh, I did, I did a deep dive into this one day. Speaking of China, this is kind of related. I don't know that, but uh, there's a song just called Chinese rap. And it's just like a remix of this one line from this one obscure song. <laughs> This clip is from um a great Peking opera. Um and here is she Chin Shiming here. This 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 I wanna see if I can find this actual in the the Peking opera. It's a very famous part of the opera because it's so hard to do that in one in one go in your breath. But that is the exact lyrics that's featured in this rap thing. Doesn't it blow your mind? I I, I really I got obsessed over this this thing for a while, and I really did a deep dive trying to figure out what the fuck is he saying, and I traced it back to a uh, that opera. Um, very interesting. It's about a lawyer who stands up to his corrupt government and he's executed for it. Um, because, oh, the story goes like this. The guy in charge, the emperor, the, it's, not, it's not like the emperor. I think he is the emperor. The emperor has like a stepbrother or something that's corrupt. And he knows if he accuses that guy of being corrupt, he'll be executed for insulting the royalty. But he's so honorific and he's so, you know, stuck to the rule of law that he, even in spite of this, he builds a rock solid case and he goes up there and he lays it out and, and fucking damns this guy. And that's why it's all done in that one take. Cause that's him laying out like the, the nature of the crimes that he's being accused of and the evidence that he has for it. And it's the, the hot, the epic moment of the, the opera. And then he's executed by the, the emperor for Defaming the the royalty. It's an interesting story, actually. Uh, Winston Fujimori for five says, "Last super chat. What do you think of the reports on the CP found on Mastodon and people using that to attack the whole Fediverse? What was it? Pervs who kicked off on Twitter, or was it a government gay op?" So speaking of anime, um, on the Fediverse, there is an instance called Pawu, which is just a Lollicon instance. It's just full of, of Lollicon. If you want to browse the Fediverse and not see Lollicon, you basically have to block Pawu because it is a Essentially, it's a huge, it's a Japanese instance, and it's full of basically toddler con and shit. It's, it's fucking vile. Um, so now, now that all those journalists went to Mastodon instances to protest Elon Musk owning Twitter, all the people on the right wing come out to basically smear the Fediverse and Activity Pub as being a pedophile safe haven, even though it's a handful of Japanese instances in cartoon, cartoon pornography from Japan. Um, they've decided to smear this entire thing, which is effectively email for social media as being a pedophile safe haven. So um, if you're one of these people who's like, I like Elon Musk now, I want to dick ride Elon Musk and I want to post on Twitter. Um, keep in mind that you're supporting a centralized service and the moment that he's out of control, it's going to be shit again. I still haven't been unbanned, by the way. I've tried to get all of my Kiwi Farms accounts unbanned. I've tried to get my personal account unbanned. He's not unbanning me. There are people in Twitter still who are actively trying to make sure that the Kiwi Farms does not get a uh, Twitter account. So you can dick ride him all you fucking want. 
I still have to use the Fediverse because uh, I'm, I am I own the Kiwi Farms. Um, Elon Musk is not your savior. Centralized services will never be better than federated alternatives. Um, don't believe this bullshit that one Japanese fucking instance full of child porn or lollicon or whatever the fuck is a reason to shun all of the activity pub protocol and the Fediverse as a whole. It's the same thing as condemning email because people can email each other child pornography. It's, it's fucking gay. Yeah, I can't even get them to respond to my emails. I'm not even being denied. They just ignore me. So I don't know. If any of you listening to, to this are Elon Musk people, um, I would like my at Kiwi Farms Twitter account back. I, can't, I need to recover the email address first, and then I need it unbanned. But I don't... Like, I, Elon, Elon's people don't give a fuck, so don't hold your breath. Um, a turf. Wait, no. This is in the wrong order. Oh, shit, I fucked up. I fucked this up. Oh God. How did I fuck this up? <laughs> okay, now I found my way. Um, Eric Raider for 10 says, glad you're streaming again, brother HH. Hulk Hogan to you, my, my dude. Uh, Winston Fujimori again says, oh wait, no, I already read that. Snita Ho for one says, have you ever been to the Northwest? No, I have not. And after that wonderful delay of me trying to find the last two messages, uh, that is the end of the, the Superberry segment. Um, so, happy new year to everybody. Uh, I hope that 2023 is going strong with all of you. And... Um, I, I hope that 2023 is prosperous. Uh, as a as the expert on all things Ching Chong, and since it was brought up that 2023 is the year of the rabbit, uh, it starts in February 12th, I want to say, this year. Um, the rabbit is the luckiest of all the lunar cycles, so all the stars are aligned as far as I'm, I'm concerned. I've had some good luck signs already. I think that 2023 is going to be based. Dare I even say it? I, I, I'm going to put the energy out there. I'm going to will it into existence. I'm saying that this year will be fucking awesome. Have a happy January 6th. Have a happy 2023. I will see you um, next week. The patch sale is going until I decide it won't be. Um, but don't wait and don't click the button more than once because then I'll have to cancel your order and it's really annoying. Um, and that's it, right? Do I have an outro song picked? I do. Someone requested that I play this song and I liked it, so I'm going to play it. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Never been so hungry. Seems like 22 years I've been looking for a fight. Never stayed in school for long. Couldn't keep my patience on. Never had the motivation quite to get my timing right. I want my story to begin. There's a time to save up and a time to spend. I'm too young for the past tense. All this worrying about what might have been Should have been a preacher, man Let the good book show me where to stand In the certainly halfway home Should have been a bobbin man Teach my boy to plow the land Leave this wicked winter just a couple acres greener when I go Never been so thirsty to get my soul right But like a summer bug, I've been burned by the blinding light Never stayed in church for long, pop the pews and white folks' songs Sunday morning never was as real as Friday night I want to celebrate my sins There's a time to save up and a time to spend I'm too young for the past tense all this worrying about what might have been Should have been a preacher, man Let the good book show me where to stand In this earthly halfway home Should have been a father, man Teach my boy to plow the land Leave this
this wicked winter just a couple acres greener when I go. And I won't be there to see it Up on Calvary calling me I know they'll say Should have been a preacher, man Let the good book show me where to stand In this earthly halfway home Should have been a farming man Teach my boy to plow the land Leave this wicked winter Just a couple acres greener Should have been a preacher, man. Let the good book show me where to stand in this earthly halfway home. Should have been a farming man. Teach my boy to plow the land. Leave this wicked winter just a couple acres greener when I go.